what is up party people man it's been a minute so damn it's been a long time that i really think about it um i do apologize for that i like i said if you haven't heard i've been back to work um got a couple of really good products that i'm happy to be on so um yep that's how it goes today i got off early so i'm, I'm up early um i'm on early damn um kind of kind of got up i'm a little frustrated flustered um you know barney he, he's a, he's a real good guy he uh he, he he helps me understand things right but here's here's the problem oh yes there's a problem he picks today today i'm not streaming to talk to riley about every situation that i have an issue with I'm going to send the links out to the bunker right now. And yes, bunkers do get preview. I was like, yeah, Jose does it like no one no one gets the the, the early leak. And I was like, why not? They support me, support them. They get on the panel first. Haha. <laughs> um just kidding, kind of, but not really. Let me see one second. All right. Okay, yeah, I just saw your message. Earth is seriously flat, so I appreciate that, and I'll, I'll uh, contact you by tomorrow or something like that. But yeah, let me get back to my chat. I'm trying to end Discord because if I don't end the Discord, what happens is I get all laggy and I don't like it. So I don't run Discord and uh, YouTube at the same time. That's how it works. Let's get in the chat. See who's here. What's up, GPS? What's up, Jack Jacks? Gently's channel. Uh, Grizz, I uh, saw you in Crash talking shit. F you guys. Oh yeah, you too. GPS. <laughs> what up, Kit? Uh, what's up, Illuminati Don? It's been a while. I haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, Crash, you're an asshole as usual. B-Ball for life in the house. What's up, B-Ball? Uh, let's see who else is here. And uh, I saw Amy. Amy, hello. Uh... Tesla Apple, how you doing? Oh man, crash. ABC's backwards to go. What's up, Seeking so Find? Uh, Matrix. <laughs> What's up, Dark Seed? Sam Cam, Wolf, Wolfgang, and Amy again. You're, you're muted. All right, no, he can't hear me. Can you hear me? Oh. Okay, and now everyone can hear you as well. Ah, <laughs> you sound good. And if anyone took that the wrong way, he just doesn't sound elaborate or elaborate. What do you what's the word? You inebriated. Yes, yeah, the one. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, I was a little inebriated over the weekend. I, I heard I didn't even see it. I heard. It was like the talk of the town. It was like a bunch of little girls running around going, Did you see what happened to Vanessa? Oh my god. It was crazy. And then I heard you one night and I went, damn. They were right. <laughs> yeah. I was but triggered and pissed off. But I'll tell you right now, Crash, you got some good friends on YouTube and on, on you know Discord. Like they actually give a fuck, so be happy about that. Whether it was normal, whether it wasn't, doesn't matter. But I got the train. You have a train. Did you just rain man me with a train? The, the train is literally like 30 yards from the corner of my property. How long have you lived there? Huh? Oh, it's just me and my old lady. Well, well I was just saying, because I, I, I've lived downtown San Diego, and there's a train track. There's the, the long train. I mean, I'm talking the, I think it was something like two and a half miles long. Some, but I, I, dry, I drowned it out. You think that's not that bad? I lived 30 feet, and I shit you not, 30 feet below the um, flight path of uh, San Diego Airport. Yeah, that shit just goes away. You don't notice you're even doing it. even happens after a while. Uh, it, it doesn't bother me, but I've noticed that it blows my mic settings up on Hangouts when it goes by. Yeah, I could see us not having to want to do that. <laughs> you know, like... Uh, Fix our settings to your weird isms. An ism, right? It's one of the, definitely one of those weird isms. Yeah, it'd be an ism. 
Yeah. What's the topic? I don't have one, to tell you the truth. It's kind of like this. How could I bring up a topic that I would want to talk about confidently if I didn't know about it? So today's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful topic is going to be, I want to know, if you're going to come on my panel, first thing you got to do is let me know when the last time you were wrong. I don't care if you were wrong about it was a left turn or it was a right turn. I don't care. I just want to hear that everyone is capable of admitting it. That's, that's I did a whole thing. hangout a while back about me being wrong. Oh, well, no, you, you, you're you excluded. You're definitely excluded because I, I, there are people that are, don't have to do this, but that's only because I hear it every day, but I want them to. For instance, what's up, Blue? How you doing? Hey, what's going on, Sean? You are super low, and if it's on my side, I apologize. I'd have to fix it. Well, it could be me. Let me check. Is he I really low on you? Sean. Yeah, yeah, it's your side. Sounds like you're talking to us through a hallway, through a kitchen, through another hallway, around the sphere, then down to flat earth. How's this? Oh, you came back to the reality. Cool. Uh, well... <laughs> Wrong microphone. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I used to do that too when I had my laptop. I used to always do that. Yeah, I was talking to the one that's over on the other side of the goddamn room. That didn't work. Yeah, that explains yeah. why it sounded like that. Uh huh. And, and Crash, don't think we've forgotten about your frog problem. <laughs> They're not oh, frogs. Dude, okay, we're going to get into that later. But, Blue, uh, what was the last time you were wrong? Uh, don't know. I don't know. There had been a time you were having one of these wonderful debates, conversations, and you went, oh, shit. Maybe you didn't say anything, but you were wrong. Kind of happened. Oh, yeah. Must have. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm so sure it did. Find out for a while. Uh, somebody needs to keep track of this shit. Hmm. You're, you're right. Well, luckily our government is now. <laughs> <laughs> not happy with our government at the moment uh, that was that was so i did I, I wasn't even ready to say that that was awesome that was that's how it should have been that was great well i'm i'm super i'm super happy tonight though i got i got anthony Riley this afternoon on jose's show to repeat his claim that five divided by zero is five <laughs> yes yeah, that was awesome I was listening yeah. at the shop. I couldn't really respond, but it was awesome. I was, I did, I literally, uh, about an hour and a half ago, started listening, and it was the best 20, 30 minutes of my life. Um, it, Barney, and, and who else was there? I know a lot of you guys were there, but someone else was, I think it may have been John Watson. Yeah, John was there. Yeah, like, John was like the guy that would, like, get, Riley amped up like you're talking you're telling me facts and then Barney would like fa verify some of them and then bring his own and it was like they were cool about it they didn't raise their voices they didn't get all super personal and best part was is Riley thought he was in control so he kept saying the, the derpiest shit in the world <laughs> Just, like I, I, I saved a clip of it and I went I have to play this because how do you Argue against an explanation for gravity with another explanation of gravity while not yeah, you can't use, in gravity. You can't, yeah. you, you can't use gravity to disprove gravity. I'm sorry. That's, well, and that's what he does. That. That's what he yeah. tries to do. Yeah, and understand, and everyone, the buoyant force, guess what? It's there because of gravity. And I would say yeah. it's there because of gravity and not the other way around because I couldn't imagine how a buoyant force would occur without gravity. Well, Whereas in, I could see gravity not needing a buoyant force in a certain situation, you know, no atmosphere, blah, blah, blah. Therefore, that's why I kind of went on that route of that. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. The after show was pretty good, too. Well, I'm angry because uh, by that time I'm about I'm at work for about four and a half hours at that moment. Um, usually, my head, my phone will go dead, which will make it a very rough day, or I get really bad signal and I hear like every fourth or fifth 
argument. So <laughs> I, I give up on those. But I do listen to them when I get home. So. It was all about the standard index of refraction. How many times did Rumpus' is super duper looming come up? No, once, maybe. I think if he was more pissed about Stingray. Who? The Plain Truth was talking about Stingray's model and how we can't have a standard atmospheric index of refraction and all kinds of shit. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so I can't look at water and figure out what the angle of incident is. Mm. But I can because I can. Mm. No, 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 no. Really, really what, they're, what they're saying is, is if you don't have the data and you have no other idea what's going on, you cannot possibly take an average index of refraction and use it. I what? agree. No, no, I, I agree. I, you can't use one standard number. In, no, in, not, if, in, you, not in, if you don't if, have, if you don't have any other information though, Sean, what well, else yeah, do you absolutely. use? Oh, absolutely. There you go. But the realization is, is that like in the middle of my, of a desert compared to, you know, Florida. Yeah. The index is going to be, it's going to be off. It's going to be different, uh, but it's yeah, still not going to be different be. to an extreme. It's going to be distant into a range. But again, this is kind of like the eight inches uh, tangent thing. It's like, it's just a simple way of talking about these things. without getting too deep into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you don't happen to have all of the data uh, on hand, what do you do? And you do what anybody else does. Uh, if you don't know what the temperature is outside and it's uh, uh, the middle of the summer, you have no idea what the temperature is. But what would your guess be? I'd say about 90 today would be a good guess. The hot as fuck? Yeah, Hell hot yeah. as fuck or comma 90 Okay, I'll I'll use that. That'll that'll do. I don't know what it really is. Maybe it's eighty five. Maybe it's ninety five. I'll use ninety. That's all a standard index of refraction is. It just simply means you don't know what the conditions really were, so you just take the average. Period. What's wrong with that? Nothing, because there's other industries that do the same damn thing. Now, if you have the actual numbers, okay, go for it. Yeah. So, Glim says Steve Torrance did a uh, flat Earth model which works based on a on a tick box in 3D. Fuck Studio Max with it. What the hell are you trying to show me, man? A movie? He linked it. I'm gonna watch this. Glim, don't make me change the way I think about you, my friend. Here we go. I'm I'm not sharing it. I don't know this guy. <laughs> I can only imagine though. This is very interesting. You guys should click that link because I don't know who this kid is, but this is boring. The problems that we're not working on flat earth models. If you haven't watched. He's using. I don't know. Happening. Okay, yeah. I'm, I actually think I know this guy. Does he, does he also know. Does he, does he talk to and stream with a guy named. Um, I don't even know, such an H or something, but he does a flat earth mod. Like he constantly does flat earth op op atmospheric optics on some software. I forget what it's called, but I fucking subbed him for a long time. If I try to find him, but I wonder if he got, got it. Cause there are people out there. Like I said, there are people that are trying to figure it out. Whether or not you gotta be generous on just talking about what we're talking about first. Riley. Um, but I thought it was important that we talk about when we were wrong, Mainly for this one reason. It's okay. I, I mean, that's it's that simple. Yep. I mean, I know there are some countries on Earth where uh, you're wrong. They'll cut your head off. Not here in America. Not in, in most of the countries that anyone that's talking to us now are in. We're good. So, it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to... Hey, guess what? It's okay to be fooled. Yep, that was me. I I gotta admit it, right? I got pulled in. Hook, line, sinker. Guess what? I'm still here. But 
So why is Matrix Media so pissed at Professor Dave? <laughs> Matrix Media is pissed at the uh, world. Because he makes sense, maybe? I like Professor Dave. His stuff makes sense to, you know, me. Well, of course. I liked him until he said the words Flat Earth. Because then he fell in. He said, I'm going to do one, and this is the last one. After the next three, four last ones. But no more Flat Earth. <laughs> you got I something. Bet, I bet Buster's making response videos and shit. Fuck that, man. That's what, all they have. Yeah, it's more. I think Dave walked a little too close to the monkey cage. And I'd love for you to explain this experiment because, again, just watching videos does not give, especially where no one can hear it, doesn't give good stuff, Glenn. So I would ask that you uh, lay out a presentation for me. Matter of fact, even if you don't have one, get on the damn panel. Like You act like you've never been here before. Like suddenly, he's just like, not about getting on this panel anymore. Who's that? Clean. That's here nor there. Let me see. I'm trying to find my screen again. Found it. Yeah, it, it's uh, kind of one of those things. I didn't even want to talk about this today, but then I heard Jose's panel and it made me so happy. Um, <laughs> Because I, I also realize it's like there's a server in Discord that like um I don't like no one knows is like from this group like literally just dumbass kids and when I say kids like I mean like in their twenties some of them are probably in their teens I don't know but they're it's like it's a very large uh, server not not very large say twenty five hundred but they're all dumb. Not one of them has a good answer for anything. I've tried to be serious. I've oh, tried just I joking around. There? Huh? Can I go play there? I need a link for that. Oh, I'll give. I'll send you one. Because it have also just so happens that all the mods left, <laughs> and I didn't know it. So I got pinged like a hundred times one day, and it was people going, "Mod, give me rules." So somehow I've, ta I've taken on the role, the act of uh, taking care of this this Discord. So I'm pretty irritated by that. <laughs> You get paid to be kids? No, but I get to see like how dumb people really can get now. Like I don't have to care out there at all. Like not even a little bit. Even if they only paid you a penny a month a piece, it's still you know two hundred fifty bucks. Uh, <sighs> On another note, why do we keep debating? Theoretical science with Sleeping Warrior when he can't do basic third grade math. Um, because everything we talk about here is theoretical science. Or the philosophy of. Well, opinion. I agree with that. I also have a concept of, you know, more than basic third grade math. I don't remember any of my third grade math, so I can tell you just, mine's worse than that. <laughs> he literally is a science denier. First thing you do when you're, so to speak, in third grade, what do you do when you like a girl? You punch her, you pinch her, she kicks you, she tells on you. Like, that's what Riley's doing. Like, Riley's just being dramatic. One day, his period will end. He will suffice to it being a glow because, hey, he's already proven every single way it can't be a flat earth. So, it's got to come to that conclusion, really. I've noticed that he's done a great job of proving that it's, you know, or giving us more evidence, but I was just curious. Like when he found out relative density, which I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he knew exactly the, the reason that this was going to happen. Relative density is specific gravity. It's not like they were two interchangeable words. Let me make it better and clear. If you can go look this up, anybody, anytime. Specific gravity is the term. When doing a test, it's, it makes more sense in the terms of buoyancy and all this other crap to use relative density. But it's still specific gravity, and it's still talking about this buoyant force that needs gravity. I mean, uh, there's nothing past uh-uh 
or an electric, and they, or uh, you know they get the full word out, electromagnetic. <laughs> Those that's that's the only possibilities. Is he still on that? You know, numbers like decimals are not positive numbers. I I didn't. I've never heard that argument. Thank God. Those, there's certain things that I I get triggered way too easy for, and I just gotta no. <laughs> I'm like, hell, no, I'm not getting involved in that argument. Like, that Isle of Man, could you imagine if you get trapped in that? Like, your psyche is fucked. Just months and months of talking about an island. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. I, 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 I come way off after Spurs triggered me, so. Man, I saw a lot of people just, like, their eyes bug out and go cross-eyed and never go back again. <laughs> I'm kidding. It was a joke, but I'm pretty sure that does happen there. I just ran out of free cash. My old lady took the debit cards from me before she left. Good woman. You don't want to spend all your money. What you should do is you need to have a my account and the account. And your account always gets buried in the backyard at night. So no one's I, had, I had a shoebox in the garage full of spare money, but it's gone after last week. Wow! You should call Guinness. See if if they have a a number for the the amount of alcohol that you can ingest in a a time. That would be relative to the amounts of other things I was putting in my body at the same time. Yeah, that changes a lot. (laughs) Not even a little, but a lot, a lot. Like not even like that a little bit, but a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know it's bad when he shows up and he refuses to serve you anymore because you're too fucked up. The actual alcohol itself? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I, 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 liar. You you broke up on that one. I posted in the side chat. No, just drop it because I don't really care doesn't really matter you know you and you know what you did and you got out you're the only one who can repent for somebody else's sin i don't know how that work <laughs> all i gotta do is say thank you when the end comes right that's for real though all right back to not ranting um guess the conversation of when were you wrong was a little di- more difficult than i thought it would be but why i'm surprised yeah. nobody else tried to jump on the panel yet yeah, because oh, they're all right. But did you not hear what I said? <laughs> you have to give me an example of when you have been wrong. The problem is, is they got so many in their head; they're all jambled up. I'm talking about both sides. That's this is very telling. I only see two <clears throat> others that are in touch with their man side and not scared to tell their feelings. They're almost. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> But for real, right. I, I know one. See, I know I, one thing. I was totally wrong about Sean. What's that? I thought it would only take about ten minutes to shut these flat Earth fuckers up, and that didn't work. Uh, no. Did I? I hundred percent. I was one of the. I'm a. Oh shit! I came across a conspiracy theory. I can debunk tonight. Not just against this panel, but I'm talking all of it. Yep, I did the same thing. Yeah. It, I was sure of it. I, it's yeah. kind of like to me. It's like a, a, a like a riptide. It's like you put <laughs> you put a lot in, but it, it takes right out. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do. So you kind of get, if you get stuck, you're stuck. And sometimes you're able to pull out, and sometimes you're not. And I wasn't. But I learned I've to swim real well. <laughs> I've come to the conclusion that they just live in a completely different reality to the rest of us. Who? <laughs> All flat earthers. I was a flat earther. That's not true. <laughs> That's not real. That can't be possible. Because then not I reality. Would have had a different reality. Hey, I've I kinda heard like things. The one I have. I've heard things I never thought I would heard. Like parallel lines can cross. You know, it's just Chemo stuff had like that. sticky fucking air. Sticky air. I, I know. Crushes his own atmosphere. Conversation. There is no atmospheric pressure according to Spurs, remember? Yeah, and you want to know what keeps them alive? 
people that go. So what is it, Spurs? What's your uh, what's your answer? And he goes, well, let me let me tell you what they what they want to tell you. And he goes on his rant, and then it's like, oh, you guys start again. I'm out of here. And you guys can listen to him yourself. That's what I do at the server. The second he starts talking, I just like yeah, everyone's screwed. I get emails all the time. You shut him up. He hasn't stopped talking in two hours. And he does that <laughs> all the time. Like everything you guys have heard on YouTube at Nathan's, that's a weak argument. He's already been broken down so many times at that uh, the other server. We hear it every night. It's so fucking bad. When I was a flat earther, I tried to debate Kimo because of his views being so weird. So it wasn't like I was a glober and it was like, Oh, Kimo, only time I wanted to ever debate you is when I had a different view. No, man, I, I thought it was flat and I wanted to debate you because your shit was just off the wall. And it's ridiculous. No one has time for that shit. Shit's beyond off the wall. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh... We got, uh,. <clears throat> We got Dave R A Q I A Gafford in the chat talking about upside down water and curve and rotation and stuff like that. Come on the chat. Let's talk about yeah. it. Yeah, I put the link out there. Um yeah, that's another thing that weird it's like so I I and here's the thing. I, I remember as a kid thinking about this and I remember, you know, as I'd say more at the tail end of being a flat earth, I was thinking about this. It's too to imagine yourself or a whole hemisphere of people upside down relative to space keyword um it, it does kind of mess with your brain mm -hmm. and, and and because of that i mean then we, we have to be more specific about it and you have to make sure you're more accurate around where we are and what you're talking about well, that's kind of how Newton and, and Einstein stay together because there's things you would need it for or not. It's kind of a weird segue, but um, what are they going to say? Brain fart. It's all your oh, fault, no. Blue. Oh, no. Should, let me see. Hey, you know what, what I got? What's that? I got a new toy. What's your new I got toy, a, Blue? I got a, uh, I got, I, yeah, I was hoping you would ask. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got, <clears throat> I got a webcam, but it's not on right now. Ah, uh, and, and I you want know to why? address why? Because you're know, smart. <laughs> you know why it's not on? Why? Because I figure I can sell this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Genius. here's the de here's the deal, you peeps in the uh, in the chat. The first guy that puts up the thousand dollar uh super chat thing go for it i will turn this webcam on holy shit oh wait a minute can we do this on my channel instead of sean's no 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 well, yeah, yeah yeah no, 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 no. Right. Blue, wait blue, blue every wait, blue. Blue. <laughs> what are you doing blue hang on no we're gonna stay right here right now let's we're not sorry crash we're not focused on you right now stop um <laughs> I, but we will all show sure our faces I have, I have three goats how many goats do you have He's in my chat, and I can boot you. <laughs> Power. Damn. <laughs> yes, right. See? I just went all America on you. I knew it would work. For sale to the highest bidder, by God. Yep. I am definitely for sale. I mean, it's, that bid's going to be real high. But wait, hey. I, I have to. I'm so glad I'm recording that. Did I just get you to say that you are definitely for sale? Absolutely. Um. <laughs> Yeah, if you use it maliciously, I will copyright strike you. Would I do something like that? Oh, yes, definitely. I would. <laughs> why wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, why else do we take people's uploads? <laughs> Very rarely we're like, this guy had something interesting to say. Let's hear more, let's hear more about his alt view. I, I posted a short video entitled it was something just to trigger spurs, and it has nothing to do with spurs. Need to do is get a picture of them. Hey, buddy. Put little, 
crowns around his head. Little jewels seem to piss him off a lot. I'm not saying I know, but I know. <laughs> oh, wait, time out. This dude, viol violation, Shasta. Violation, what are you doing here? What are you doing? What do you want? What do you want? What are you doing? What are you doing here? What do you want? Just so everyone knows, Sasha does this thing that I actually like a lot, and I wish I could do it, and I've seen him do it. But apparently, he's not doing it right now. Why not? What? But what? <laughs> what did you say to me? Was it a couple nights ago? What did you say? Oh, was that last night? I think so. I don't remember. Oh. I, what would you... I've said a lot of things. Oh, you can't have the same excuse. Which one as, uh, specifically? Uh, the time you were going to take off. <laughs> what did I say? You said you were going to take a month off. Oh, yeah, I am. You're here. I just came to say goodbye. Oh, thanks. Don't why? Why would you do that here? Yeah, just say goodbye. Jesus Christ. <laughs> is that what Discord is doing? <laughs> Crazy <laughs> wimps. Jesus. Just fucking find another meetup. You'll find us. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. They'll be back. They'll all come back. At least you're not like, uh, what's his name, Groupie? The one that's in, or uh, Groppy, whatever the fuck his name is. The other kid that's in I my server, crash. that runs the server. Yeah. He's a, he, he went flat earth for a second. Almost wrecked me. I was like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? It's supposed to be all smart. You know, that put you guys on the spot. Ha ha ha. Where the hell does everyone go? You guys are here, right? Let me see. Fine, I'll go in the chat since no one wants to talk. Um, just me. What are you talking about? Blue's here too. All right, I'm in the chat. Oh, big guys. blue's here. here too. Oh, that's what I want to do. I want to comment on someone's uh comment. Uh, Dave R A Q I A Garfin or Gafford. Um. I want you to understand something. The claim that I had, I, I started a channel after I became a Glover. Hmm, no, actually, I have a channel for three years now. Um, and nope. Oh, actually, I had it before Flat Earth, during Flat Earth, and after. So, kind of all the spectrums. Um, sorry, it, I didn't just get a channel. I mean, you can if you want. If you want to live stream tomorrow, you could probably do it. Um, it's not hard. Just don't you know, grow some balls. <laughs> well, it takes a minute. It does. I mean, yeah, there's things like, for instance, right now, I'm. I didn't realize I was going to do it, but I could, if I needed to, I could easily rent. Like Jose says, he has a problem doing it. I can rent for. I think I've done it for at least four and a half hours on here once. I just go. I don't know how. I don't know what it what it even talked about. But I can do it easily. I believe that. Yeah, and I'll ask anyone out. Like anyone do that? I can do it. No, I can't say it longer. It doesn't work that way. No, Barney. No, 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 Barney. Barney here. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the chat. He's trying to convince me that... Uh, <laughs> what the? What is it? H U F? I don't. In standard, know. I don't know what that is. I, I, I have it. All right, damn it, jump, Barney. Now I got to go look this shit up. What's an H U F? Wait, did Barney send that? I'm so confused. I don't see Barney in my chat. I don't. Who are you talking to? Yeah, he's out there. Uh, I'm going to have to ask if you took your meds today. <laughs> I don't see Barney once.
Sorry Everybody. about that, Sean. You can keep blue sounds, not for chat if uh, if somebody does it because I just made more than that on the phone call. Okay, Barney, I got you. That is a Hungarian for it. It is exactly point three three cents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm right, trying to figure okay. out what Barney just gave you. Let's see, four hundred times point zero zero three three. I, I hang on. There's a problem because I don't see any of this. Where's this conversation happening? In my What's okay, hang on. I know, I know what it is. I, okay, so there's this stupid on your thing chat. You just super chatted. Uh, yeah, he like, just no, super no, no, chatted. Okay. So this is what you it gotta, is. You got a book thirty-two out of him. What the hell? Thank you, Barney. I appreciate it, and it's a force. Um, here's what it is: YouTube. When they, you you go to your watch page, so basically where you guys are watching, <laughs> it only does top chat. So if you feel like you're missing something, it's because you are. <laughs> you need to go. Well, then to change live it to live chat. chat. I just did. God, you think I, I'm dumb, Barney? I, I work. In- no, I'm not. Hello. Damn it, Mar- Barney, I work in Newtonian. You get out of that Einsteinian shit, okay? For real. Brainiac. Yeah. That 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 thousand hickeys that you got there, buddy, is worth about three bucks. <laughs> Thanks, Barney. It's a force. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been your buoyant force in your wallet. I was kidding. <laughs> Barney turned the semantic warrior upside down and inside out today. Yeah, he did. And I only, like was, I said, I only heard part of it. Oh, it was I, funny. I heard the full part. Um, what were they talking about? Um, oh, great. It hey. was awesome. Hey, hey, Barney. How you doing? We're on the same team today. Well, don't like Riley. You don't have to yell at me and stuff. Okay. Hey, Barney. Did I defend your position well enough, showing it, that it's a force? I, I'm not gonna lie; I have it on. I have it edited. So you think gravity is a force, as far as you're concerned? Well, it depends on your metric. If you're well, using it, the real well, metric, it depends then it's on not. my recording. <laughs> <laughs> I have a recording of Sean saying he's for sale. I, I am for sale, and uh, you can email me at Truth Frontline. At Outlook. Oh my God, that's racist! <laughs> Wait, how is it racist? See, he's this is what Flyers has done to him. Made him just controversial. <laughs> he just has to say something. <laughs> Donkeys aren't brain, aren't brown. What? So, when you were. The one thing I didn't understand, and I, and I wish we guys would have gone into, but I, I can tell Rylan's going to let it happen. So, he, I think you guys, someone was talking about the buoyant force and, and helium, for instance, rising. Yes. Well, I also had a question in the fact that I, I get that there's enough helium in a balloon to make it rise over the, the, the weight of the balloon. Or better yet, the mass of the balloon. Because that's where I wanted to lead to. And then um, it, it's very clear they don't understand that weight is not mass. Yes. The same way density isn't isn't weight. Yes. Or a vector. <laughs> oh, a density gradient could be a vector. No, no I'm thinking more weight. Yeah, I'm thinking vector. That's correct. Yeah, it doesn't have a direction. A density gradient has a direction. Mike Chick. Mike hello, Chick. Jose. What's up, Jose? Hello, hello. I got some bad headphones. Works. Very good. Hola, Jose. What's happening? What's happening? You did great earlier today, Barney. You had your ground over there, and you <laughs> you got a lot of time in with the. Uh, Big ass, like almost 20 people panel. You did great, man. You know what? Uh, no, they, they, they were really nice like to me. I don't like you stealing my smart guys. 
<laughs> right, right. So what's going to happen is, is me and my boys are going to come over and see you and your boys, and I want 3% off any Super Chats my Brainiacs are on. Thank <laughs> I'm you. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, right. Sean, Sean, I, I was there promoting your channel. Everybody knows that they can find me on your channel. Hell yeah. And I was just there making a commercial for it. Perfect. Like, this is the product. <laughs> Cross campaigning. You three percent. Goodbye. Cross campaigning. There you go. Yeah. No, thank you, Barney. You did great. And I appreciate you. Yeah. I mean, uh, last few weeks or whatever, you've been jumping in on and off. And I thank you. Yeah, you're a very smart guy, and and I like hearing your take on on all of these things. Okay. I'm waiting thank for you. Some point for him to snap one day, because he hasn't snapped yet. Oh, I've snapped it probably a couple of times today. Yeah, he got yeah, but a little testing. Not, not as bad as I do, but. No, yours is just, yours will make a freaking tiger stop in his tracks. Like, oh, I did something. <laughs> I, did, like, I think someone was saying we were in one of these hangouts and we were like, oh, to be your kids. <laughs> the fear they must have felt. Yeah, this is kind of like, for real, Big Blue and Barney were the two. Like uh, the two protagonists on on today's episode earlier with Anthony Riley, you were the the two that had the bigger voice, you know, against his claims or arguments and all the stuff, you know. They also have the biggest voice out of the, the community that you know just regularly explain how he's bullshit. Joey is full of shit, and then you know, in the end, hopefully he'll realize it. I mean, he has to. Oh, he realizes it. He knows it now. It's it, it, he's he's one of the he, people he, I think knows it's not flat. Period. Yeah, he he can't afford. I mean, he knows he can't back off of this. Yeah, yeah, not at all. He's, for what? If it, it doesn't even need to be for money or anything like that, it could just be this thing he has where he feels he needs to whatever <laughs> he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, Sean. I mean, it, it, you you said that right. His channel is not monetized. Yeah, it's so. It's, I, I don't see what I don't see what he gains from this other than some. Uh, it, it's got to be some other way. It's got to be a religious thing with him or something. I don't know. Well, because I realized it like this. It would maybe, be, go ahead. Maybe he's practicing some kind of skills on on. Being an, not an antagonist, but a uh, contrarium and, you know, all, and all this lawyer thing, you know, trying to find arguments and points that he cannot win, but he has to find strategies on how to win on semantics and all this stuff. It has to be something he, he's, he has to gain something on just interacting and try to win points that are unwinnable, if you know what I mean, you know? Yeah, I kind of think that may be what it is, Jose. He's he's just into the uh, the argument idea, and it doesn't matter what it is. He's just trying to argue a point and see if he can uh, can win the argument. Yep. Yeah, but if the only way to win an argument is by misrepresenting the argument, then that's a bad argument to make. True, Barney. Yeah, totally true. And he makes a very I bad argument. I agree with him on a lot of things, and then we get to that point and argue which metric are you using? Because that, that's like in, in his claim about um, um, it not being a force, that's literally the only point of contention I have with him, that he is trying to apply the statement of Einsteinian gravity to a Newtonian frame of reference. And no, you can't, sorry. <laughs> It's force. <laughs> yes, if you're measuring your space as Cartesian in meters or any equidistant units, and if you're measuring your time in linear time, then it's a force. It has to be. I do it in mm. linear force or linear whatever you said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to look it up. Fuck. Well, I but there's a skill. He, ha so he has a... He has a skill on, I mean, even though he butchers a lot of what he says, because his English is not 
that mm. articulated, he got skills on not misinterpreting, but and twisting the words and the phrases so he can interpret it in a different way. It's like moving a coma or a period, you know, in a sentence, and instead of telling, <laughs> kill, kill him, not free him. If you put the coma in the wrong way, you tell him, you're saying to kill him, not to free him. But if you put the coma in the other way, is do not kill him, free him. You know, it's some kind of a wordplay that he does, and he had that skill. Son of a bitch, I wish I could be articulated as it's, him it's, in that sense on, on the semantic what, game. They're salesmen, because like I, I say, my brother's a salesman. He could sell water to a whale. It's the same. It's the same thing. Same tactic. No, forget the way. It's impossible. Anthony did that all afternoon. I mean, how many times did he say mass is not a force? Well, no shit, Anthony. Nobody said mass is a force. Where and, the hell did they come you, up with that? And the, because you guys kept correcting yourself correctly, that's kind of where he kept stumbling and he kept getting really frustrated. So that's the thing I like when people break down his arguments and they actually do it correctly. Like they don't get into that wordplay game. Like I thought Barney was when he was like, uh, here's a link. And Barney was like, no, no, go ahead and share your own link. I was like, man, I want to do that. <laughs> like that's where he does his thing. You know, I feel that way. Felt like you trust what you were going to say. What? Trust light? Because when Riley reads his little sources from everything, he does the quantum eraser shuffle. Where he changes terms and sentences around to word it better for him rather than just be honest and explain what's going on and with reality. But no, you, look. You, you you just have to understand that five divided by zero is five, <laughs> <laughs> and and you know everything that you need, and you know everything that you need to know. I think I think that was rather telling. Yeah, it was definitely special. I can't. You see. may see that. You may see that on my channel. In a day my, or two. my question is: Is why isn't Riley on here going? I fucked up. <laughs> this is a safe place, Riley. We won't that, judge you for long. Well, that is an the, absolutely indefensible position, and he knows it. The best um, switch and bait that he did today for me, I not that it worked. It, it just the most interesting one was. Why do you agree with Rumpus but disagree with Einstein? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was right in the middle of Rumpus says mass is not a force. Why do you agree with him when he says it and don't agree with Einstein when he says it? Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, 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 I was, I was sitting here. Too. There was a lot of face palming going, around, going on over here at my place, Barney. <laughs> what you you're me about. What's up with the math? Like five divided by zero. That's something that Riley said. <coughs> I can't remember where he said it, uh, but I, uh, he and I were talking a few days oh, ago. Yeah. I don't know, a week ago maybe, and and that. That came up, and, and Riley stood me down that five divided by zero is still five for the same silly reason that he gave today. If I have five apples and I divide by zero, I still have five apples. What? We're talking about math, Riley. Goddamn. Five divided by zero is undefined in mathematics. Yes. And four yeah. divided by two is still four by, yeah. by that definition. Yeah, exactly. No, that was, uh, I don't think he expected that when I, <laughs> when I threw that one out there and I really didn't think he would follow through again and say it again, but he did. I was still trying to find the hangout where he said that, uh, numbers smaller than zero were not negative numbers. 
No, he said numbers smaller than one were negative numbers. That is an even better sound bite. What hangout did he do that on? Where did he do that? But I like, seriously just I really need to 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 look up my my um, complex limits because there is like for any number on the number line from between minus infinity and plus infinity if you divide by zero and find it by limit you can get any number i need to find what what the complex um approach is to get five just to show that five divided by zero is is, is yeah. five yeah but it's undefined because it can be any number between negative infinity and yeah, but that means that in some in some limit in some calculation, it actually is five. It actually could be, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You're saying that under some circumstance, Riley could actually be correct from a but, certain frame of reference. <laughs> but that simply means that I'm going to have to. Buy a plane ticket and come there and kill you before you find that. <laughs> oh, but that, that that would that would mean that he has to accept imaginary numbers and complex planes. Yeah, there's a problem for you. Right on the on the real plane, it's always either um, negative infinity or positive infinity. On the real line, uh, yeah. Or if you approach the limit from the, li the real line, what is the title of your show today, Shonji? Let's talk. The last time you were wrong. Ooh. I was wrong I... this morning. I was wrong this morning. Where after the show. I say, I'm going to fix this TV. My niece TV broke. She said, it just stopped working. I plugged it. It doesn't work. I say, oh, I, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to open it. I'm going to find the fuse, a fusel, a fuse bowl or whatever you call it. I'm going to find the motherboard. I'm going to find whatever is burned. Maybe I'm going to do a little bit of a, of a fixing and I'm going to put it together and it's going to work. And I was wrong. I couldn't fix it. Damn it. Hmm. I know we were not talking about that specifically, but I was wrong this morning. I think we have all been wrong at any point. I mean, very recently, even in the flat earth globe earth debate subject, we all make mistakes. Or am I, or have you guys not been wrong lately? Oh, I've been plenty wrong. No, I'm wrong all the time. Hey, Sean, uh, Schrodinger's looking for a link in the chat. Why isn't Schrodinger on the Discord back room? Don't know. Schrodinger, why aren't you on the Discord back room? Why aren't you on Discord? He has issues with Discord. Everybody has issues with Discord. With Discord. Hmm. Well, he was out there in the chat somewhere. I can't find him now. Oh, there he is. Schrodinger says he was wrong once back in 1986. Shout out to, shout out to Planner Walk. Planner Walk le left a message on my video from yesterday. And the message was, Nanny? With a question mark. Because when I opened my show, I went, Ahoy, hoy! <laughs> and he just he comment in my comment section, Nanny. That's funny. Shout out to Planner Walk. <laughs> it was funny. I had a laugh. I go like, "You said I'm a bitch." That was good. 
Schrodinger says he is on Discord. He's just really bad at it. And so are the rest of us. Why? Because it sucks. That's why. Hey, Schrodinger, I'm going to send you on, on Skype. I just I added you to Skype earlier today. So I'm going to send you the link on Skype. Now, Shunji must let you in. And Sean doesn't like you very much, so you may not get in. Sean's not listening. There you go, sent. It's the last one. You're going to have two meet on Skype, the one I sent you earlier today, which is not good, and the latest one, that's this one. Man, I did that latest uh, Windows upgrade bullshit to my <laughs> to my computer this morning. That damn thing took four hours. Hallelujah! Holy shit! Yeah. Yeah. All I ha I don't have too many programs, and it tells me it's overload overloaded. When I just got OBS and the meat open, so it's a pain, you know, dropping a little bit of a frames. I don't know what's going on because the computer is not that old and it doesn't have a lot installed, but I got to deal with it, you know. Hello, guys. Hello, Mr. Schrodinger's cat. Uh, so, Crash, that... Uh... The video where uh, Sleeping Warrior was talking about numbers between zero and one, I've got a whole video about that on my channel. It was That was so stupid, I had to make a whole video about it. Link, 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 link. Where did that uh, happen? Was it on Ranty or my channel? It was... Oh, I don't watch Ranty, so it had to be on your channel. <laughs> But I've got a about an eight, somewhere about an eight minute video about uh, of him saying that, uh, saying that, and and Big Blue just lighting him up about it. I think hey, I've got about four hundred views on that so far, which is uh, pretty good for me. Hey, Crashers, I put a link from LK uh, in the chat side chat for you. Where did, where did Crashers go? See here? Oh, he was. I thought I was just talking to him. That looks like he dropped out. Crashers, get your ass back in here. I'm talking to the ether. That sucks. Because it's not there. You're talking to the ether, and Michelson and Morley are listening. Oh, my God. <laughs> Terrible. I mean they're spinning in their graves. Yeah, I remember that deal when Riley did that number below one is negative. Holy shit. I, I pressed the hang up button. Damn it. Uh -oh. uh, help me out here for one second, guys. You hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, me, I, I, me personally, I don't know. Can you help me out and tell me why in the hell am I here, like in this call? I'm not talking about my show because my, I really enjoy doing it, but why am I here? I don't have anything to anything to give you or to present to you. Do you think uh, I feel like out of place, like for real, personally? Well, because you're, you're just oh, a it, super great guy to talk to, Jose. That's yeah, it's why. just a, it, it's a bunch of friends sitting around talking. Yeah. You've come here to congratulate me. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. I appreciate <laughs> it. <that. laughs> Let's go for it. <laughs> no, I, I'm for real, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I was born, I got nothing to do, just having a smoke and listening to the show on YouTube, I say, I can maybe be in the call, you know, because why not, and I'll just chat with you guys, yeah, it, that's about right. It is so wonderful to have you here, Jose, yeah. it really is, I'm and still, I mean that. I'm still, still basking, and I'm still basking in the glory of my new job, that uh, hopefully I'll start on Monday. Well, yeah. 
All That's good, man. Congrats. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. I wish I had something to bask in. Oh, shit. The link is public. Let's get some flat earthers in here. Come on, you flat hard fuckers. <laughs> oh, I'm, away like, I'm going to wait like two weeks. I'm taking a, a long two weeks vacation uh, to find me a new job. A new, I don't want to do supermarkets anymore, bro. I've been working in supermarkets for the last 12, 13 years now. I have been through four different supermarkets, bro. Just stocking shelves. I did it all in Walmart. I was up to manager, you know. I did manager for four years and I got burned out and I went down to like stocking shelves and that's what I did in three different jobs. But I'm so burned out of that and I want to change careers. Yeah. Uh, uh, get a, uh, an actual like vocation uh, is, is where you're really going to excel. Like do, find a vocation, whether it's plumbing or mechanics or something like that that you really like and that's where you're really going to thrive. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do like retail business, like dealing with customers, but not quite supermarket. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll, I'll find something. Nobody wants to be a mechanic. Nobody. You owe the snap-on man every day for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's I get a kick. I get a kick. I get a kick out of working with people, right? Uh, from from little old ladies to grumpy old men and and young guys and girls and like different kinds of people with different attitudes. I really do like ha having face to face talks with them. You know, I really do. I, I got the biggest laugh today because my uh, last video I released a couple of days ago was about that lady uh, Marilyn Spirit level, and I said in the video that. Uh, she refuses to debate me. And then today I was watching one of her videos and uh, one of the comments was, so when are you going to debate Schrodinger's cat? <laughs> it's, uh, the, I'm, I'm making it in, into her comment section. So sooner or later she's going to have to address it. I, I went uh, into her about uh, Captain Cook. Because she was saying the whole Captain Cook circumnavigated uh, Antarctica, which I thoroughly crushed in my video. Yeah, I don't understand where they get that from. It's like when they go through the uh, the Admiral Byrd said there's um, land on the other side of uh, the, the South Pole. Like, well, no shit. And guess what? It's about the size of the it's about the size of the United States. Well, yeah. What? said was land beyond the North Pole from South Pole. the United States Midwest. So if you draw a line from the U.S. Midwest to the North Pole, yes, there's land beyond that. <clears throat> oh, and uh, Sean, to answer something that um, you put up at the beginning of the show, I was wrong today. I meant to say... I meant to say um, <laughs> Fallacy of composition, I said, um, fallacy of multiplication. Or is that still part of the show where we have to come, when we come on, we have to sh say something we got wrong? You really don't have to uh, go there. You're talking to flat earthers, they don't know the difference. Yeah, they don't even know to say that. that they just, no matter what you say, they just say, uh, nah. Yeah. Uh uh. It's sad when Gladys is smarter than Flat Earthers. Isn't it, though? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad Barney got my joke earlier, by the way. It's like, I, I don't often measure distance in schools of fish. <laughs> But oh, when I do, it's tuna. Yeah. I so said, I have to give you credit, though, Barney. Uh, you did something today with Sleeping Warrior that hasn't been done in a while, which was you confronted him on the metric in which it's measured. And I don't think any of us had really thought to do that before. And he couldn't wrap his mind around it. That was beautiful. But that's literally the only... Pro that's why it's a forest in Newtonian and not in, in Einsteinian. That's literally the only difference that, that, that is required. Yeah. Did any of you notice that he bailed out as soon as he could? Yep. 
I think he was well aware of the fact that he had just had his ass handed to him. On a platter. But you know he's going to run to Nathan's in the morning with a couple of clips and uh, and say that he owned us all. <laughs> yeah, if, if somebody sees him doing that, I, I want those links. I want to see how how he comments on the conversation. It'll it'll take some serious spinning to get out of that. Well, it, all of us know that Riley has absolutely no shame. Oh no! I mean, the triangle thing—he just. Uh-oh. Sean, we need you, man. Sean's mic is not working. Oh, that's upsetting. That's right. They just heard us uh, talking about people behind their backs. Or didn't hear us say doing that. What a shame. No. Apparently, I got called out. Uh, Sean was telling me that apparently uh, free-minded... Uh, no. One step play with me on refraction. Apparently, sound is back. Oh, good. Sean, Sean fixed it. I guess. What is the issue with refraction, Brian? Uh, he seems to be under the impression that uh, ball, let's say ball earthers have hijack refraction to where it bends down. He claims that it always bends up, or its primary position is bending upward. Mm -hmm. Does he understand density? No, I don't think he does. Or if he okay. thinks he does, he thinks of it as what Riley does, which still would mean that refraction works opposite of his th uh, thought process. Hmm. So, what well, relationship does refraction have to do with light? A lot, right? I mean, it kind of hand-to-hand -hand or not really? Because yeah, I heard this morning that you guys say that light travels in, in a straight path. It doesn't bend. In its in its own nature, it does. In its own nature, it doesn't bend in a vacuum. When it comes into contact with other material, depending on the index of refraction, it can it'll bend towards the denser material. In the terms of the gradation of air, that comes off as a curve because you're getting because you're getting you're getting lots of very small small bends. And so we would perceive that as a curve. But as for a hard, hard bend, that that then the Snell's laws apply, right? But it got to, it has to go through a different medium. It so has to go through a different density within a medium. It can be a different density within the same medium. Correct. Uh, a density so it doesn't have to do like 
I'm sorry. It doesn't have to do like uh, uh, from going from the air to the water or going through the whatever atmosphere to the uh, back, you know, space. It is within the same medium but different densities. Yeah. 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 It'll bend in a gradient. Actually, curve in a gradient. Yeah. Uh, you can actually visualize this with um, a 10 gallon aquarium, water, and um, sugar. Yep. You, make, you just don't deserve the sugar. And it'll bend and it'll bend down as you get closer to the bottom, I should say. And then, and then it, it could bend up or down. I mean, it's mostly down for the refraction. In, uh, on some observations that flatter say, I can see further than I'm supposed to see because this lighthouse or whatever. So that means the it, the light is bending down, but all it can also bend up. It yeah, will always bend toward the denser medium. Yeah, always. and it's very uncommon for it to bend up. It does happen, yeah. though. Yeah, if you have a temperature inversion where you've got more dense air above less dense air, yeah, it can bend up. But that will be a local phenomenon. Yeah, very local. Very yeah, unusual. that's a uh, plain devil's advocate. Like I do a lot. Like uh, when uh, a while ago, maybe a year or more ago, Soundly did this test and he put uh, lights uh, along the Little Tensas Bayou. That's seven miles long. And he put lights, I think it was either every one mile or every half of a mile. And then he put a time lapse and he put a camera for a few hours, I think. And then you can see the deviation from up to down, you know, a little bit of a bending. It was mostly down. It was between straight, the light. So uh, they flickered down most of the time. And every once in a while, it did a little flicker up, you know. So it was more down, but a little bit of a up every once in a while in those two hours. Nothing is denser than a father's head. <laughs> I heard a little background noise from you, Sean, so you might be back. Just a joke. No, it's, a, it's a good joke. What's going on, party people? Oh, not much. Uh, just a little bit of a shoot the shit fiasco here. I'm sober today. Yay. Yay, for once. Hey, I uh, dust off my, my FPV quadcopters crashes uh, last Sunday, and I, I went flying with my buddy. Yeah, I had uh, two batteries uh, smoke up on me. <laughs> I, I haven't, I haven't, uh, didn't maintain them for a few for a few uh, months. So yeah, that's not, that's not good on them. Uh, you'll have some awesome video on my channel from this weekend coming up. Oh yeah, what you do? Uh, DSM off roads gauntlet in Mich in uh, yeah Michigan. We'll be going going. Yeah, back. I'm about. To I'll be uploading the videos to my YouTube. Yeah, I'm about to uh, attempt building my own uh, fixed wing FPV. So, wish me luck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fixed wing is entirely different than a quad. Yeah, it can hover. <laughs> For a minute. Or, stop or anything else. Well, I mean, you, can, you, you could configure it to be a vertical takeoff. But anyway... I'm, I'm, I bought a few a few plies of uh, a foam board from a, the dollar store and some uh, packing tape. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Good luck. Yeah, that's all you can say, really. <laughs> yeah, saying that a fixed-wing aircraft can hover is like we always said in the Navy, that uh, any ship can be a minesweeper once. Uh, it, no, it, don't say that you cannot hover a fixed wing aircraft. I had, used to have a video of me hovering a scale Piper Cub into a forty mile an hour headwind. Let's yeah. go. On. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can hover a Harrier or the Joint Strike Fighter. I hover over a toilet at the gas station. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But just so you have fixed wings, just because it propels doesn't mean that it's a um, it's a flight device, right? 
about when I when I when I do hover over the toilet oil, I I do correct for Coriolis when I drop on the. Yeah, you do provide downward thrust, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, Schrodinger's, did you get my text message? Uh, I, the last one that I saw from you uh, pertaining to the carburetor, you mean? Yes. That you were putting it in the uh, sonic cleaner. Yes. We, we, we found out why it was acting up. Uh, what was the issue? It has a hairline crack in the throttle body. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I've got a buddy that works for a company called Airweld that's fixing it right now. You will have it back to me Monday morning. Oh, that'll be great. I will. I'm gonna. I'm planning on making a, a video uh, dedicated to you with my son riding the four wheeler. Sweet. But no, it, it would cause all kinds of weird things to happen. So, but we found it. Yeah, well. Every time you would roll on the throttle, it would just die out. Oh yeah, it just sucks in a bunch of extra fuel. It was over there. It was one of the things we didn't see until we got everything nice and cleaned up. So I dropped it off so he can get it back to me Monday morning. Yeah. So even if I had installed that rebuild kit on my own, it still wouldn't have worked. Correct. So I appreciate it again. Thank you. Yep. I'll uh, send you a text with your total bill here in a little bit. I'll send you a dollar ninety nine in response. That's better than nothing. <laughs> no, it was just uh, what he's charging me, which was cheap, or well, relatively cheap, and then the shipping to send it back to you. That's all I'm charging you for, brother. Yep, no issues, and again, I appreciate it. And yep, I yep. Will, I'll, I'll send you work, and you'll get a, a nice video about it. Awesome. I'm going to do a video on how this thing goes together in case you got to do anything to it ever again. You know, uh, that <laughs> there's so many things that I have not known how to do that YouTube has shown me how to do. From right. from taking apart guns that I'm unfamiliar with to uh, laying flooring, there's uh, YouTube is pretty good for that. Yes, it is. Yeah, it doesn't teach you how bad your back's going to hurt after you've ripped up a bunch of flooring. I'll tell you that, though. Nor does it tell you how big of an idiot you are if you just try and manhandle a big block Chevrolet out of a car with a couple buddies. Oh, God. Yeah. Or that just because, you know, a dead man's lift looks like your kid's swing set, your kid's swing set probably won't lift that motor out of your car. Mm -mm. <laughs> your kid's swing set um, comes out of the ground slightly whenever your kids swing aggressively on it. Why on earth would you think that he would pull a block out of a car? Uh, there's several YouTube videos on it, and they usually end quite comically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they go look at the chain fall hoist that we use, which looks like a kid's swing set, except it's built out of usually either solid pipe or concrete filled pipe, and it'll pick up big shit out of our mud trucks all day long. Oh, it looks like my kid's swing set. I could throw a deadfall chain on it and pull the engine out of my car. Yeah, you usually got an S-beam up at the top for the trolley to run on, but yeah, uh, never mind about that. Yeah, just details. Right. Be careful which tree limb you run the rope around, too. You can have some real problems. Those are still awesome videos. Usually not for the car, but at least oh, for no. entertainment purposes. Yeah, just go on YouTube and uh, and type in "hold my beer," and you'll be entertained yeah. for days. <laughs> Hold on, hey, wait a minute. I might be in one of those videos from Trucks Gone Wild. I like uh, brake checks gone wrong. Oh, those are yeah. good too. What's really great is when uh, a video that you're in when you're a kid makes it to big time. Uh, one of the video, uh, there's a video that I'm actually in that made it to ridiculousness uh, via E Bombs World. Oh damn! Nice. Have yeah, any of you ever seen the the? There's a Russian truck driver who doesn't give a fuck. And yeah, it, uh, what is his channel name? I can't remember, but he's got tons of dash cam videos of him. Just when a, a car brake checks him, he just doesn't even touch the brake. 
No, doesn't even slow down, downshift, nothing. Nothing. No Jake break, nothing. What else do I watch? Uh, I watch uh, the Ghost Rider videos of the guy on the superbike from the UK that antagonizes the cops. Oh, yeah. Uh, Did they ever catch him or no? No. So far, it, it seems like he he's, must be really good at riding I with have no headlights. I have I'm one of like a few guys that has his actual information. So, yeah, he, he's an amazing rider. And completely not who you think would be making those videos. I did run from the cops once on a Katana 750. Uh, I had just come over a bridge and I had run the red light going onto the bridge. And I realized as I was on the bridge that the cop behind me was an unmarked police car. And so I slowed down and jerked my wheel into the the first neighborhood after the bridge and I saw him turn his lights on and I just gunned it. I made about five turns really fast. And he's probably still looking for me. Uh, it's I've done it a couple times, but Ghost Rider goes out of his way to just straight up, oh look, there's a cop. We'll do a donut right there in front of him and get him to chase us and then lose him and come up behind him and start all over again. Like yeah. his camera guys are fucking amazing. Yeah, no, I, I did it out of out of panic, <laughs> but uh, he does it on purpose. So blue's a redneck with a four wheel drive. You know what trucks gone wild is? Yeah. Oh yeah. There, you been to one? Uh, no, but I know what you're talking about. I've I've uh, been to a mud bog before. Well, trucks gone wild are mud bog events that are like. Big, massive trucks, a ton of horsepower and mud, and a strip club all rolled into one. Mm -hmm. Oh, Crash, have you ever been to uh, Suck Bang Blow at Myrtle Beach? Yep. That is a ton of fucking fun. They got burnout pits inside the bar. Yes, they do. And waitresses with paint on bikinis. Can you what's, still ride What's through? not to like? Can you still ride through and order beer on your bike? Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that, but, uh, I, every now and then you'll just be in the bar and somebody will roll, roll yep. in on his bike and, and hey, Sean, I've, I've never heard of okay. voice before. Oh, okay. God, you guys know how to make a channel fucking boring as fuck. <sighs> I've been listening and yelling into my microphone. I couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> you listening to us anyway. Right now they're stepping on gleam. Right. What's up? Uh, thank you, B-Ball. I do appreciate that. This is a new video for buoyancy and density argument. Um, what, what are you talking about, Glim? What is up with Glim? He takes cherry picking to a whole new level. Yes, he does. Um, well, he, he definitely seems to enjoy doing it from the chat because he can trigger people the easiest. I, I would still like to know how a horizontal bubble balance works on a flat earth or using right. relative density. A what? A horizontal uh, bubble balance. Well, yeah. horizontal long level works as is. No, a bubble balance for balancing a motorcycle wheel. Oh, you see you're doing that shit again? Not because everyone it, knows about motorcycles. We looked it up the other night before I got wasted. Yeah, well, I don't know how to balance a tire, so how the hell that help me at all? And, and what's wrong with talking about trucks gone wild while you're gone? Oh, oh I'm no, you guys just that. suck. You guys just are like, just, like I, I'm going to pay for your plane ticket. Conversation goes to like a whole derailed like area of nothing to do with the sh like, at all being talked about. <laughs> I was just That's talking why. about paint on bikinis. Yeah, like you what's always not do like? that. That's the stuff you do, Cliff. That's why you drove a boat. I can light some firecrackers if y'all want. Yeah, thank you. Hell yeah. Nice. Cliff, you are on thin ice as it is. Are you sure you really want to take a dip? Brian, I will kick you out of here. You do this every time, have, man. Sean, I, I have a relatively serious question. You go to Texas a lot. If I were to pick you up, if I was to drive my mud truck down there on the trailer and pick you up, would you come play in the mud with us for the weekend? The fuck? Yes. What the fuck? 
What? Well, because you talk about off road and you don't get your truck dirty because yeah, yeah, you don't like mud. Because yeah, so. no, 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 we're not dumb. That's a no brainer. We will, will corrode our vehicles. That's the difference. And why mud it if I can play in the rocks? That's what that, that's what, do. That's what gallons of WD 40 do to keep mud off of shit. Right. You just got to power yeah, wash it underneath. Like I want to invest in fucking WD 40 because I want to play in mud. Nah. Uh, you can run. A, you can run a forklift, right? Yeah. Keep asking forklift. me all these weird questions, and they're not computing to why. Because it takes a forklift to put the tractor tires on my mud truck when we get there. Okay, I got you. I've changed tires. Use using those for loaders and stuff too. I put tracks on as well. I know exactly how to do it. We're good. You have them on beads or no? Uh, they're 144-inch tall tractor tires on custom beatbox, yes. Ah, so this is tall, but easy. Easier. Yeah. yeah, I just can't transport it on the low boy trailer with the tractor tires on it. Nope. Who sounds like they're too wide. Or too tall. Whatever way you want to say it, flat earthers. <laughs> yeah, you can't get it under a, a under an overpass. Nope. So yeah, it, it's a whole process to set my truck up, but me and my granddad are thinking about going down to Texas next year to play. Let him know. Let me see. I'm trying to get this back on track, but I can't. I don't see it happening. I'm trying to find all the information I was looking for. Oh, this seems so like a great idea when I started. Yo, Sean, did Freeman give you a date? No, he didn't. Um, actually, when I after I told him you were going to be out of town and when you be back, like ish. He hadn't answered me back at all, but I mean, he, he definitely sounds interested. I mean, okay. he, he called you out. Like, it was out of nowhere. It was like, that guy, Brian, because I wanted to start a conversation again, but you know, we were talking about, um, me and Free were talking about uh, the sunrise and sunset and all that stuff. And we started start talking about conversion lines and all that, and I wanted to talk to him about all this. And then, like, for some reason, I don't know what happened between you guys. He was like, nah, nah, who I want, I want Brian from your panel. I'm like, whoa. Ooh, okay. okay, I'm not much of a debater, but if he wants to do a formal debate on on uh, on refraction and the way it bends and uh, observations related to it, I've got no issue with that. I just need a I just need a date and about a week to prepare so that I can get really w well read up. Uh, on you the clovers are such pussies. Yeah, you too, Cliff. What? I need a week. Give me, give me, give me four and a half days and three three uh, study guides. Well, I'm I'm not just going to walk into a debate cold. I mean that Why? that's stupid. What do you mean? The same reason that you wouldn't uh, step into the octagon against a fighter without preparing. There's a big difference. No, there's not. Yeah, I I could walk. I could I could not walk out under my own volition in a cage. If uh, well, yeah, if you're, I mean I could walk or, into a debate. You're, you're not. It's not the same thing. Well, I yep. want to know the style. I want to know uh, what lies. his arguments are, what he's said in the past. Beliefs, other lies. So, I, I mean, I, I, it, it's it's not a good idea to just walk into something cold like that. It's almost like you're taking it too seriously. Well, here's well the no, thing. I, I'm in yeah, it for the polls, be... but I don't also don't want to, you know, walk in unprepared. I would like to be correct when I make this when you When you fail to... When you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail. How about this? Instead of researching to learn about the subject, research how to teach the subject. That's part of what I try to do. <clears throat> or do you disagree with, with my statement that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail? Yeah, I, I kind of just ignore everything you say sometimes. If you plan <laughs> If you fail to plan, you should plan to fail, but you have failed to plan, so you will be surprised by our failure. Or a right. victory. That's why I plan. You plan to fail? No, no, no. I plan so that I don't fail. But you do fail. <laughs> you burn fungus spare parts in a welder. Is, is, flat earth, is flat earth gone, and or at least the people you've debated? I can't find any of the debates that I lost. 
are they and, uh, still flat earthers? Because uh, unless you've conveyed to them that your facts are actually true, they're probably still flat earthers. Yeah, so, but oh, they all are, and we're still pointing and laughing forever. at them. At least one of us left the internet forever. The, the most recent guy you debated, um, the guy who kept calling us fucksticks. Who was that guy? Matthias. Matthias. Oh, he's not yeah. gone. Who was he not? That? I don't even know who the hell that is. He ran away from the crash pretty quick. Yeah, he's on my Discord server. Uh, he, yeah, he this is, he goes out, puts water on rocks, and then puts a um, a jar on oh, top. A jar on top. And it says, "See, this is the only way you get rain if it's in a container." It's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, told him, I told he him. I told him, "Congratulations, you proved evaporation." He tried to tell me that if you blew smoke in a bottle, it would create a pressure. A pressure gradient is created because the smoke separates from the air. What? <laughs> what does that does even he, mean? Does he mean that the particulate falls out? As the particulate falls out and separates from the from the air particles? Well, that's that that is what happens. But no, he said it's a pressure gradient. Okay. How, does, how is that? No. Yeah, he he just raged our entire. Uh, debate. It, it really wasn't a debate. It was just him screaming. I I had a two hour phone call with him, and I haven't heard from him since. I haven't seen him on a single panel in a month. I haven't even seen him in a comment section in a month. Uh, Simon and Dan just made a video about the first guy that I ever debated, uh, Flat Earth Fokker, uh, yeah, who is now that. saying that. Uh, there's a bridge in Vancouver where he lives that they just moved three kilometers. They, you know, the, the big bad they. The ominous they just picked up a bridge and moved it overnight? Three kilometers, yes. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. some China level shit right there. Yeah, th this guy's nuts. He's the one that said that uh, they took the T off of everybody's sketchers overnight, and they moved to the Sri fuck? Lanka. What did you just say? Repeat that. He said, well, he said they took the T off everybody's sketchers, they moved Sri Lanka, and they moved the Panama Canal. Well, they Man, have, they have moved the, Trent, the Panama Canal in a sense of, it. you know, it's how wide it is and its current speed. And no, 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 ah. no. They physically move the entire Panama Canal. They that was my very first uh, it in and big it. scale debate on, I was on uh, non sequitur for that one. Who else have I seen for a while? Hip Hop Pippy. I haven't seen anything on his channel for a while. Uh, the last either. thing I saw was he debated uh, Craig uh, he debated Furball after that, didn't he? Uh, perhaps. Is I Craig? So. Hey, I got a question. Is Craig like demoralized now? Like, is he just like a a, a, a sad, sad Glover getting beaten up by both sides now? I I am going to remain silent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is pretty serious, then, huh? Well, I've been telling you, you know, you walk around giving people disrespect. <laughs> look what, yeah. look what turns around and slaps you, Craig. <sighs> I don't yeah, know I what's going ask, on, but I got questions about that earlier today, though. And um, without more Craig's story, I couldn't possibly say it. This way, you either can, you either can fit in this community, or you don't. I've seen a million of them. I do know that Craig is starting to go down um, the younger, let's see, the uh, debating against younger creationism route, which I think will be, which I think will be good for him. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Wait, does he think they're all morons? Okay. Younger, most younger creationists are um, substantial morons. And then they're the ones that are really smart that have made um, good money off of it, like the Hovens. Oh, so he wants to make some better money. Yeah, the, the Hovens have made their, well, Aside from the jail time, uh, they made a pretty good living off of that. Did you uh, see my comment on Radical Stream about Kenneth Hoven the, last night? I did not. What happened? Uh, he did a uh, stream on him about how he healed his jet with prayer. And uh, 
It was a pretty good video that Radical did, but I made the comment. I said, so if I spew a bunch of bullshit and demon tongues, does that mean my subs are going to group together and support me and buy me a personal jet? Does he have a jet now? Yeah. Jesus, he lost, the, he lost everything in the um, in the tax scandal. He's gotten that much back in the couple of years he's been out? Yes. That's horrifying. Did any of you see the Kent Hoven roast? It was about uh, not quite a year ago, I think. A bunch of YouTubers got together and roasted him. It was yes. hilarious. I'm going to have to find that now. Yeah, all you, awesome. just, just YouTube, uh, search Kent Hoven roast. <coughs> Hey, Sean G, what's up, Taryn? Hey, what's up, Aaron? I forgot you were in here. I, it's kind of odd that you came in and didn't, didn't say anything. You all right, buddy? Yeah, we're all right. We're just getting off work. I'm all, all dirty. Right, just check it. Just check it. It was kind of odd. It was like, damn, he's here. Oh, wow, he is here. We haven't heard one word from Aaron. He's oh, don't don't get me started. So don't get not, me started. Yes, hey, Aaron, would you, you, about to go, you about to go to the shed? Oh, I'm in the shed. Right, okay, yeah. so if this is a perfect opportunity Wait, for anybody hey, to you're, listen you're to Aaron listening. right now, because as the night goes on, you will hear the progression of Aaron, <laughs> which is awesome. It is. It is awesome. Um, and yeah, by the way, panel, you're also in the shed, so it's not just me. Yeah, in the shed. What do you mean? Yeah, y'all are here in the shed. In I'm the shed. Del, oh, shed. Del okay. Del yeah, yeah, that's where Del he Del ends shed, up doing Del. bad stuff. Why are we all in here in she shed? Oh, here we go. Is it Does pink? it involve pseudo? We haven't seen the outside. It may be pink. Are we drinking? <laughs> are we drinking lean in the she shed? Yeah, we never. Hey, if you all don't like drinking. the shed, I'll fucking boot you out. All right, I'll yeah, just I kick no you out. It'll be me and Sean. Hey, It'll just yeah, be me and real. Sean. Oh wait, What's that's up? weird. Wait. Hey, I have a. Make it weird. Why you gotta make it weird? Why, wait, no, make it, weird? <laughs> it wasn't weird until you made it weird. It's like going no homo. Now it's homo. <laughs> what the fuck? I caught it right away. All right, that wasn't. That was not my. Goal. Again, just stop this talking. Is, this yep, is a yep. rage Aaron's shed, back. not a homo he's shed. Into, right. So everyone understands, he's into beer number one. <laughs> I was going to keep a tally. We we all have our vices. Hey, I have. Is Barney on the panel? Yes. Uh, yes, he is. I got. Well, when uh, you you were in a conversation with someone else, sorry to butt in, carry on with that. But uh, whenever it's free, I'd like to have a thought experiment with Barney. Go ahead. You're doing you're okay. doing a thought experiment at the moment. Go ahead, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> okay, and this is Barney only. So Sean, regulate your panel. Okay. Whoa, I don't want me butt panel. in. I'm just my people. All right, your peeps. Can I peeps. Can, can I call for help? <laughs> Uh, I'll give you three layer bombs. Yeah, if you, say you do no, have three layers. That's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Barney, it's Aaron. What's up? Uh, I was just thinking, you know, and this is a topic of gravity. Oh boy. Okay. Here we go. Um, I have a desk, and I have a very accurate scale, you know, down to the uh, let's just say, and you can correct me on this, milligram or something. So I want to put okay. a, a one gram weight on that scale, right? And it's a measured, machined, find, uh, verified weight, right? It's not just something I picked up, but it's a verified uh, weight that I put on this scale. And um, I turn it on, I tear it, you know, it's zero, put the weight on, and it reads one gram. Uh, what what is causing that number? Why is it on what? Oh, my bad. Go ahead. Yeah, for, for for Barney or me and Barney or or other folks. Um, it depends on which what what are the mechanics of the scale. Um, you can either have a conductive scale, um, which will measure pressure by pressing on a sensor and changing its conductivity, or you can have a mechanical scale um, which will push against a spring of known tension 
to to tell you the exact number. How does how it's, does how do either of those scales though uh, display one gram? Like what what is the external force that is causing that? Yes, I I, I agree. Wait, scales, wait, wait. Okay, so is is there an acceleration involved or? Um, Yes, weight is a force. So, the, um, at the at the point where where the scale gets still and and gives a normal reading, you will have all your forces um, in equilibrium. The the force up, the electromagnetic um, repulsion of the scale, and the elastic force in the spring in it, versus the the force down on the scale but the the scale is doing one thing um, so weight is a force it is measured in newtons what the mm -hmm. scales that we use so it will not tell you that it's one gram but the scales that we commonly use everywhere assume that you're measuring on earth under some standardized standardized parameters so they will convert it into mass and give you grams very good. Yeah, let's keep it on Earth. So let's do a, an Earth-based, uh, very accurate scale of okay. either of either function, whether mechanical or um, you know technological. <laughs> however, okay. it does it. Uh, sure. So when I put that weight on the scale, it does register a number to me. So I can see a number that says, "Oh, whoa, hey, that's yeah. one gram, right?" Yeah. And I, I, I want to know how the scale knows it's one gram. You said weight. Yeah. Um, but what what is causing that weight, let's say? Mass in the gravitational field. Okay. So a gravitational field is, what is the vector of that gravitational field? Towards the center of the local displacement which would be, if I was standing here, which way would it be if I, you know, I'm looking up, the, looking the, down, looking up? Um, average, average of all masses affecting it, right? If you, if you measure, like, literally, the air above it will be attracting it upwards, the air next to it will be attracting it um, next to it, the, your body will be attracting it towards it, and all of the little bits and pieces of the earth, rocks, Every atom will be pulling in their direction. Most okay, so of most of the mass weight, most of the mass will be oriented in one direction. That's where the strongest force will be, and that's where, like, when you sum them all up, some of them will cancel. What remains will be pointing down towards the Earth. Okay, down, down is the vector, and so I guess I made a mistake. Let, let's move up to a larger weight because you're right. Um, it, a small weight could be affected by a whole bunch of other factors that you just mentioned. Um, Every weight so will say, be affected. Let's say it's a hundred. Let's say it's a thousand pound weight. Right? Same thing. But still, yeah, it's still. Uh, but no difference. My body, but therefore my body will not uh, really affect yes, that will. weight. In fact, yes, I would be attracted to that weight. Is no, no, you're you're both attracted to each other, right? The, it's the a mutual attraction. Point. The, okay. the gravity works in such a way that the same force is applied to both bodies in opposite directions. So okay. as the Earth is pulling you with its attractive force, you're also pulling the Earth up with the same attractive force. Now, wow. your That's mass good. is so much lower than the, than the mass of the Earth that you are moved much more. You have a lot less inertia, so it's easier to move you than to move the entire Earth, so the Earth will be moving imperceptibly, and you will be moving a lot, right? Okay, all right, all right. So we're getting the nitty gritty and clear right there, and I thank you, Boyd. Oh, for that. I, yeah, I, I'm just trying to, to point out that it doesn't matter whether your weight is big or small; you will always have the same effect okay. of everything pulling it and having an average in one direction. I agree. So let, let's use a 10 pound weight, just where, uh, just on numbers that I can visualize. Okay. So we have a 10-pound weight on a very accurate scale. We, we put the uh, machined, measured, verified weight on the scale. Um, doesn't matter where at on Earth. It just, it's, it's been teared out and it reads 
10 pounds. That's the number I'm given, right? And the vector mm. of that weight is down, right? It's not sideways. Okay. There's nobody around it, you know, but, can, but the, the can I put, math. Can I put in a little bit more of nitty gritty? It does matter where on earth you are. If your if your uh, weight if your scale is hypersensitive to the milligrams on su on such a weight, because I if you're on the hypersensitive scale, I, I just said very accurate, right? So yeah, that's the same that's thing. thing. Hi hypersensitive. <laughs> but anyways, okay, Barney, we're we're on the same page here. What, what I'm, and I'm very happy that you you uh, clarified okay. all these details that my question I, I, I'm sorry if I'm being tedious no 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 you're awesome that's why I like uh, listening to you talk and talking to you I'm very uh, honored to talk to you so uh, we, we get to the scale it's not a hyper scale let's say it goes down to a point one uh, you know reading okay it's not okay hyper. maybe a hundred yeah maybe a hundredth okay well, uh, a tenth is even just about thousand, sensitive enough to, to measure thousand, the difference between poles and equator. Even a thousandth of a pound, though, is not a hyper scale. I mean, that's kind of uh, standard, I guess. Yeah. Like getting into the milli. You know. Anyway, so I put this. I put my scale out. I I I tear it. Meaning, when I say I don't, uh, yeah. I don't care where I'm at on the Earth. But let's just pick a point. Let's just say the equator. Just so we're both on the same page. Uh, tear it out. We're, we're at a point where the gravity is most standard. Okay? Or, or a place that you and I agree on, where, wherever you want me to yeah. put it. Yeah. That doesn't matter. Where would, you, where would you like it? Yeah. Let's just, say, uh, let's just say in Texas. How about that? Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Very simple. And so I tear it out. Scale says zero. I, uh, you know, I... I put some other shit on the scale, pull it off, make sure it goes back to zero. You know, it's kind of, you know, tap on a little bit and it goes back to zero. Okay, so it's pretty good. I put this 10 pound weight on it and it reads 10 pounds. Uh, you uh, relayed to me that the the um, reason for that is weight and the, the vector for that weight for the scale to give me a number is, is down. Yeah. Uh, but not counting all the other... Um, things that you talked about, you know, the sideways, yeah. okay. and all that stuff. But, but the scale well, still reads well, 10 Barney, pounds. But can we say that the buoyant force keeps us, you know, or that the buoyant, yeah, the buoyant force, for that matter, um, would keep us from, like, sinking or something? or So it's like... No, so the buoyant, the buoyant force would make the weight always seem lighter by the weight of the air that it displaces, but that's right. not... It, it, it's the, the net force is the it vector down. I, what I meant to say was it does change. It does change it, it the variable in the weight, right. basically. Yeah, it could. Yeah, but but that, that's a tiny effect. Remember, it's just a thought experiment. I actually don't have a 10-pound weight. I don't have a scale. Um, you know what I mean? We're, I'm just trying to scale. Uh, one, one of the reasons for all this nitpicking is I want to share, make sure that all of uh, the things that might affect, I don't know what you're going to ask me, so all of the things that might affect the, the answer are said beforehand so that mm -hmm. I'm not moving goalposts, I'm, I, that I have things that I can invoke, this is what I meant, this is sure. why that is so. But Absolutely. please. Go. Being very clear, being very clear, and that's why being I like clear. to yeah. Um, so we have this way in Texas, uh, we've made sure the scale is, um, stable and we okay. put this 10, 10 pound weight on it. And we both, and all the panel agrees that the reason for that number would be a, an overarching vector of down absent mm -hmm. all, all the nitpicking wow. that we did on the sides, right? You know, yeah. The upward yes. and the buoyancy yes. and all that crap. Okay. Yes. The vector is down. It gives the number. And, yes. Uh, okay. Now here comes the thought experiment. So I attach a helium balloon to that weight, and I have this apparatus where I can fill up helium just as much as I want until that weight just hovers off the scale. Okay. So it's sitting there hovering. It's not rising. It's not lowering. I mean, it just came off a millimeter. It basically just made the scale okay. go back zero okay 
Yeah, fair enough. All right. Now I take the scale and I put it on the ceiling right above that balloon. Hmm. And I cut the line and the balloon is confined to only push up on that scale. Okay. Here's the thoughts. What would that scale read on the ceiling? The force of buoyancy. Well, what it would, it, number? It would, what, what number do you think it would give us? If it's on the ceiling and the balloon is pressing against it while going up. A as couple as of it, milligrams. As the balloon yeah. had just picked up a 10-pound weight. Just off. What? The balloon yeah, the balloon has picked I think, up, just I think, picked I think up. you're asking uh, a very. Uh, you're asking for a number that is so. Not no, just a uh, number. It's not like a ten. No, 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 Barney. I think Sean, Barney wait. gets it. Barney gets it. I, I, I want to understand the question first. So, you had a, the ten pound weight. You removed the ten pound weight, put the scale up on the on the ceiling, and let the balloon run into it as it's going upwards. Right. Yeah, full contact with the scale only. Okay. So getting rid of the nitpicking, you know, side side motions, all that. Okay. What what do we think? Because the, the balloon had just picked up a ten pound weight with a down vector force grab or weight. Yeah. What what do you think? I'll just say you, because this is an open question. There is no answer. You know, it's just a thought experiment. Yeah, fair enough. Um. What do you think that scale would read to us, or, or to to me, or whoever? You know what? Okay. It just so picked up a ten pound would, weight. It would. I cut the it strength, would. Put the scale on the ceiling. <clears throat> you know, kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah. So it would measure the force of buoyancy and convert it into um, mass, as though it were in a standard gravitational field on Earth. Since you've turned it upside down, you have turned the whole field upside down, but that doesn't matter. So it would it would give you some small number. Um, the weight that you are measuring is the difference between the weight of the balloon and the air that that balloon displaces, like the same volume of air that 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 would occupy that yeah, place yeah, if it was... I get the, it's kind of two reference frames there, kind of, right? Yeah, you're, you have turned it upside down. Sure. Yeah. Now, one, a layman would think that, wow, it just picked up a 10-pound weight. So the balloon has, and these are just numbers, a 10-pound force of rising. Right or you know buoyancy and remember Wait, I don't the balloon the balloon picked up a ten pound weight. That's what he said, Bernie. Yeah, that's a huge balloon. Yeah. Well, yes, I have this apparatus where I fill just enough gas, helium. Let's say helium. Uh -huh, to lift to lift the balloon to to lift the weight. That's right. Okay, so I, 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 I missed that part of the experiment. Go can ahead. I, can I clear up one thing, Aaron? Now, now, what are you saying that you haven't? A balloon that is capable of just lifting the ten pound weight. It just it's just, just right. Okay. Now are you saying you're gonna take the ten pound weight away from the balloon and let it rise to the ceiling? Is that what you're saying? Yes, I'm I'm going okay. to take the scale first as the balloon just hovers there where where it was you know, it's like a millimeter off the scale. I'm gonna okay. take the scale, put it on right oh, above yeah. the balloon. In that case it's going to measure. And then measure I'm 10 gonna pounds. cut the string. Yeah, I'm gonna cut the string so the ten pound weight falls. And the balloon yeah. goes up. So we have. It's going to it's going to measure ten pounds. Say again, Barney. It's going to measure ten pounds. What, what is the vector, vector of the, what is the vector of that registration? That that the opposite. So it, it, it is up. But wait, it is up. But since you've turned the scale upside down for the scale, it is still down. But what is the vector of the weight? And it's going to scale. and it's going to mess up with your tear. Okay, so <laughs> we almost have a net, right? A net of zero. Yes, but that's how you've defined the experiment. If you said that the balloon just about picks up a ten-pound weight, mm -hmm. that that's where you have made the the zero, right? Uh, yeah. 
okay. when I cut the weight off and I just let the balloon do what it does, but centered, focused, all the all its um, force, let's say, whatever yeah. force it has, pushing up onto the scale. Now the vector is up yeah. with 10 pounds. With yes. 10 pounds, right? Yeah. Yes, so. Hmm. So what? You want to... Uh... You want to be clinically accurate about it, it would be slightly less force up there because the density of the air is a little bit less at the ceiling than it would have been. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, we, 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 can, we can make it in a room which is just high enough to accommodate the weight, the scale, and the balloon. There you go. <laughs> a, a, mil, a millimeter on both ends, you'd never measure. You're right. Yeah. So even if I, if, even if I had, measuring the measuring the weight of the weight of the helium, you'd be measuring its ability to lift. You'd be measuring its lift force. Yeah, but if it's just if it's calibrated to just it's, lift the weight, it's it's already calibrated to exactly ten ten pounds. It's measuring a weight. It is yeah. on the scale. I'm, I'm failing to force. see a point uh, here. So yeah. So uh, weight or a negative weight. weight. I don't know. Would you guys call it that? A negative yeah. weight. Uh, going up, uh, so the vector changes simply by cutting the string. Right? No, the there's no such thing as a negative no, weight. The, the force the weight didn't change. The force is uh, 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 always apply. in that direction. The force was always in that direction, Aaron. The balloon was all, always had a. Its force vector was up always. It still is, whether you cut the string or not. What, what happened to him? He him asking yeah. me questions. <laughs> Well, so what? What my my point is though, when when if a balloon could lift the ten pound weight just off the scale, a millimeter yeah. off, so the scale reads zero. Yeah. There is there is no more down force. Right. We're in equilibrium. Yeah. Okay. There's still a downward force. So why why is there? Where is the down force applied to the balloon then? It's still there. It's it's Where a buoyancy. Is it? it's still Where there. is it? If, if Arnie said that that the scale on the ceiling would read ten pounds, where's the downforce that's applied to the balloon? Now, okay. uh, Blue Marble made a good point saying, "Oh, gee, was density Barney, different." That, but, that was the point I was trying to talk on earlier when he would do that part. <laughs> he, he's talking about the oh. weight versus what keeps it from smashing to the ground. Or or should the scale on the ceiling read eight pounds? Because there is a downforce that we already no, clarified. No, 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 no. It should, it, should, it should read 10 pounds. Why? Because you have calibrated it by making it lift a 10-pound weight. That means that its buoyancy has to have a 10 pounds of force upwards. Okay. Right? Now, that, that, now what, just by saying I that I have calibrated it just to lift that, that weight, you have already calibrated it so that it has 10 pounds of upwards force. You, okay. you have already negated the mass, the, 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 uh, the, the weight of the balloon downwards. The vector. Right? Yeah the, yeah, the direction of anything, right? Yes. You have already negated that downward force when you said that it that you have filled it up j so that it just lifts the the, the the weight. Okay, so if I put a uh, just a balloon, not inflated, just the rubber sitting there on that scale, yeah. it, it may weigh point whatever gram. Yeah, shit. a gram, let's say. Yeah, should that not be? Uh, should that be discounted on the ceiling scale because of the no. down vector of, of weight is what you're no. talking about. No, it has, so again, you have already calibrated it. Uh, when, you, when you have set it so that it just lifts, that it just hovers the weight, you have taken into account the mass of the helium, the mass of the balloon, all of that, and set it up so that it counteracts the weight of the of the weight, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So when you cut off the weight, whatever remains must be ten pounds up. You have already included all of those other things. You have you are not removing the the balloon when you when you um, cut off the weight, right? Yeah. yeah. So by filling the balloon 
with a <clears throat> gas, uh, a less heavy uh, medium, I guess, it, it counteracts gravity, right? Um, no, it's still equally affected by the gravity, but the fact is that the air around it is heavier than it, so it will fall below it. It'll, it will be attracted with a stronger force, right? And that will push the balloon up. All right, that was a good, good experiment. <laughs> okay. The, the net force is upward. Yes, it is. And you have set up the experiment so that it's already calibrated to, to 10 pounds. Well, I set up the experiment originally with just putting a weight on a scale. That, that was the yeah, setup. Yeah, I know. Yeah, for a down, down vector of a weight, mass, force, gravity, mg. Um, and so I wanted to get a, a concession from you that yes, down is the way it's pulled. But then I also wanted to get a concession from you. It's when it's pushing up, then yes, the vector is up. And, How and is why that a concession? why hit that if if the vector with weight is always down? You know, why 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 would I'm not saying why oh. would a balloon go up, I'm just saying why would the scale read ten pounds if the overarching vector is down? So because um, of Newton's third wait, law. Wait, wait, wait. So um, what 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 we call weight is just a force in the direction of gravity. Li that's literally it. It is um, if you if you take a spring in tension, its force is not gravitational force, right? If you if you press if you if you press that against the scales, it'll also tells you how ma how many grams or pounds of pressure is there. It is just measuring force. We call the force downwards weight, the, the, the force of gravity we call weight, and in the situations where there are many forces affecting it, we kind of average it all out and say, okay, weight is, is that's predominantly weight, and we won't take into account all the minutia that I've mentioned during the thought experiment, right? But effectively, you're just measuring a force, and whichever force you're measuring in whichever direction on a scale will be converted to, to grams and will tell you what, what is the equivalent of that weight in, mm -hmm. in... I get in, it, man. Uh, okay. You're very articulate. You're, you're, uh, I, I'm trying you're to be clear. How, however, I, I want to know which direction stuff's going. If you're measuring just forces, it'll be in the direction in which the normal force is acting. So when you does, sum does all the force, have weight, right? Does helium have weight? Yeah. Um, so helium, helium has weight. Helium has its own weight. If you, okay, so, so the vector you, would be down. Right? The, ve the, the vector of the weight would be down. Yes. Okay. But okay. in the scale experiment, it, it, we, we think, just thought experiment, it would read 10 pounds, uh, you know, after... It would read 10 up. pounds up, yes. Yeah. How, how because, accurate of a scale would we need, do you think, to, to measure the, the down vector counteracting the buoyancy? Oh, um, in, in the setup that you have explained... Um, you, the, the sensitivity of the scale doesn't play a part. You can have an infinitely precise scale and it would still work the same way. It so what you, would need to, what you would need to do to figure out the weight of the helium balloon is to measure it in vacuum where there is no buoyant force and get just its pure weight without any intervening other forces. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just to get the weight. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Um, and if you if you inflated a helium balloon in a vacuum chamber, assuming that you could find rubber that wouldn't burst or something like that, 
yes, you it would fall down. It would fall down as fast as a block of 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 um, I don't know lead, right? And yeah, it would it press be. down on the on the scales, and you would know what the weight of the rubber in the balloon is, and what the weight, what the what the effective mass, what the weight of the helium is. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know, yeah, you take out the medium, uh, helium then would be the most dense medium, and or most dense material like that. Go. Yeah. Down. There would be no buoyancy on it. There would be no displacement of air pushing it up. So when you take out the air that's of the vacuum chamber or, or the whatever's in there, uh, let's just say air, uh, that's the only reason it goes down, right? It, yes. If you didn't take out the air, it wouldn't go down. It wouldn't go down because the air would fall around it and push it up. Sure. So where's the, where's the G factor in that uh, vacuum it's still there. The, the G factor is the weight. Uh, sorry. The, uh, no, big G or little G? There, what? It comes up, right? The vector is what? up when there's air. You know? When there's air there, then you have the same force of weight going down for the mass of the balloon and the mass of the helium, right? But you have a much stronger force of buoyancy going up because you have taken such a huge balloon that it displaces um, over 10 pounds of air, right? And th those 10 pounds are then what's pushing the, the balloon up. So let's go, let's go, uh, I just, and this is off the cuff, you can shut me down if you want, oh. but say a space suit. Okay. It's in the vacuum of space, it's filled with this heavy material called air, obviously. Yeah. Why, why doesn't it get affected by the downward vector of gravity? It and does. And I guess you could say speed, rotation, maybe. Uh, it, it does? It does. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. So the, the reason why um, things don't fall, well, they do. So the, the same vector, the, the same force that's accelerating things down here, like, let's say the, the ISS, why isn't it falling down towards the Earth? It is. It is just that it's moving sideways so fast that when you take the curve of the Earth, by the time it should fall down this much, it has already moved sideways so much that it's at, at basically the same altitude when it falls across the Earth. And then it's moving this way, and right? So it is falling. But if you stopped its orbit, if you stopped its rotation, it would just go down like a rock. And if you took... How fast is the ISS going? Um, ISS orbital velocity? I don't know it by heart, but that's Something easy like to Google. 000. Yeah, it's about 17,500. Yeah. And so the moon, how fast is its orbital velocity? Um, it's a lot bigger, something like 500 kilometers per second. Um, about, they say 2,000 miles an hour. But yet it's moving away from us. 1,000 kilometers per second. Yeah. So 1,700 miles an hour, something like that, 1,600. So how come the moon doesn't just fall down? Same, same reason. But if it's moving sideways in orbit, as it's moving, I, I literally, at, at, in, in one of Sean's hangouts, I programmed a simulator for it live on stream showing how gravity works and how, how, how things affect each other and why they're missing each other. It's moving so fast sideways that by the time it, it, the, 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 the Earth accelerates it down towards it, it has already moved around it. The yeah. side, right? Yep, 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 yep. And, and that just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. So it's constantly falling towards the center of the Earth and constantly missing it. 
And that question with the moon, I'm not trying to hand me up. It's a dumb question. I know it's... It, 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 there are no dumb questions. Thank, thank you, Blue. You don't have to come in and bite my head off. I know it's I, I, the way, so... Um, I'm actually really appreciative of the patient and careful way you're asking questions. Like, this is the best situation for me to, to just work, it, work through it and give you answers as correctly as I can. Yeah, and I take your explanation, your answers to heart because it makes sense. Uh, now, I can go off the rails and be like, well, what if I was standing on a scale and I had a scale on the ceiling and I pushed up on it, what, what would they read? Um, bo both of them would increase their reading by the strength of your pushing because you'll be pushing against the upper one towards the down one and both of them like the downward one would read your weight plus the force of your pushing and the upper one would read just the force of your pushing yeah makes sense now what is the cause of that because all scales measure is force upward force in any direction, in the way you orient the scale and press upon it. Right. Okay. So could the upward force, when I'm pushing up, uh, it has to be subtracted from the, the bottom scale to, to get no. my true weight, maybe? Or uh, Yeah, yes, that would work. If you, if you took those two numbers and subtracted the, the upper measurement from the lower measurement, what would remain would be mostly your weight. It would also be your buoyancy unless you're in a vacuum chamber and stuff like that. I was, that's my next question. Was, or could it also be my buoyancy in this atmosphere? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, would be, it would be diminished by your buoyancy in the atmosphere. Or could but it be... The, 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 amount, the, the weight of the air that, that, that has the same volume as your body is really not that much, so it, you can really disregard that yeah. okay barney i mean i got a couple more but I'm, i'll let the panel uh, have at me for a while okay well wh what i would add is if, if you're doing a pull-up on a pull-up bar you're applying an upward force that's opposing the downward force if you, the upward force that you're applying overcomes the downward force of gravity, then you're going to move upward and you're going to do a successful pull-up. Yeah, I've never been very what good. If just, what if I'm just overcoming the Anthony Riley idea of I'm just more dense than the air around me, you know, so I'm just, I'm just heavy. You know, then you would be doing a pull-up. You would you would be changing your density according to the Anthony Riley rules. Right. You would have to overcome that that downward force if you want to move your body upward. Well, when I'm hanging there, let's say I'm hanging on the bar. I haven't done okay. a pull-up yet. What is? So you're saying that there's the downward vector causing me to feel on my hands this weight, my weight, right? Right, yes. and your grip on the pull-up bar is the equalizer. Say again? The tension of your muscles. Is Correct. Okay. Uh, I don't know where, where we're going with this, actually. I don't know, you, you started how, asking questions. How come I can overcome it 20 times then? I mean, gravity must not be that strong. It's, it's not. It's, it's really weakest, not that strong. It's the weakest of the four fundamental forces. Yeah. What are the other three? Uh, the strong nuclear strong force, the weak force, nuclear weak force, and the electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force. force. <laughs> very, very good. Hey, that was a quick test. Quick test. <laughs> the electromagnetic force um, of gravity is one of my all-time favorite things. I think it was George who came on here and did the calculation. And the electromagnetic force of gravity? It's yeah, somebody came up with no, this idea. No, no, Barney, you caught him. You caught him. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm serious. There's somebody. Uh, there's somebody who comes on here pretty often who said that oh. gravity is an electromagnetic force. That's uh, Grim. Yeah. And Grimby. Yeah. Okay. George did the math with him on it, and it would be pulling molecules apart. Literally. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
<clears throat> is uh, the electromagnetic force. I think it would be pushing force. water upwards, wouldn't it? Yeah, Barney, Barney, the electromagnetic force, right? Uh, it does exist, right? There's an electromagnetic field around yes. the Earth. Yeah. And what is what is the one of the main components of my blood? Um, uh, red blood cells, Would you say iron? Would you water? say iron? Okay, iron. Would Fair enough. Say iron. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, would do you think a body might be affected by this electromagnetic force? Oh, it is huh. undoubtedly. Okay, so but you're so mostly have, water, which is diamagnetic, which is opposed by grav, uh, by mag magnetism. Well, but it's also buoyant. Right? Water is buoyant. What? It, it could also be buoyant. Water is buoyant. It's a aspect of the buoyant force. Well, yeah, in a puddle of mercury, it would be. Yeah, well, yeah. So would an anvil. So where's gravity yes. there? Right. Everything that's ferromagnetic or magnetic in any way would be affected by the Earth's magnetic field. Yeah. And so the comment that, yeah, your body's mostly water. Um, I'm not... What, uh, what when is I, diamagnetic? You know, when, I cut, when I cut my hand, water doesn't go shoot now, right? <laughs> well, why <laughs> would it go shoot now? If you get a well, sized artery, it sure would. Water would shoot out of my body. Okay. Yes, it would be filled yeah, with all the if, stuff, if red blood cells and all of that, but, and you'd call it blood. If it's an arterial bleed, then yeah. yeah. Now, if you're asking for water separate from it, some, if you're asking for blood separate from water and its other components, you need a centrifuge for that. Or you need a lot of time, your I'm choice. Not, I'm not asking for that, you just proposed that. I've yeah, we're, we're just being silly. You asked, I just heard you ask what a primary component of your blood was, and I was like, well, that'd be water. It's the majority component. It's like 92 or 93 percent. So what, what's, the relevant, uh, what's the relevance of the question um, that, that it's iron? Hemoglobin. Uh, what, 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 what were you getting at? Magnetic force being, uh, Barney, of the four forces, gravity is the weakest. The uh, strong nuclear and the weak nuclear, um, those I don't understand. Uh, they seem to be on a very small scale, but the yeah. electromagnetic scale seems to be prevalent. Like we, oh, we the, deal with this stuff all day long. I'm talking. The electromagnetic stuff. scale is the same as gravitational. It it basically has infinite range, and it diminishes with the square of the distance. What is the cause of this electromagnetic force? Uh, um. It is explained by, like, what do you mean, what is the cause? It is charge and the movement of charge. And uh, the, the, uh, on Earth, let's say, the, the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, the Earth's magnetic field, um, I'm not exactly sure, but it, it's um, mostly uh, the dynamo effect in the, in the convection currents within the mantle. So that there is... Can you explain dynamo? Um, basically, as as the 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 central core, which is iron at very high heat but very high pressure, so it's so it's solid. As it's spinning around, it is creating convection so currents solid. in the mantle above it, which is which is liquid. And you as those, what? Uh, I'm sorry. You said it's very high heat, very high pressure. So therefore, yeah. it's solid. We have a solid yes. core. It's not a molten yes. core. No, the core itself is a solid lump of iron at a temperature which, if it were at this pressure, if if it was under atmospheric pressure, it would just instantly become liquid and 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 pour. But um, the the aggregate states of matter are not merely a function of temperature. So if okay. you squeeze something strong enough, it will become solid even even at very high temperatures. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Right. Uh, carry on, sorry. So the the uh, so the the, 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 the dynamo effect, yeah. That that core as it spins, um, and with the heat being contained in it, is creating convection currents in the um, mantle above it, in the in in the magma, right? 
in the in the liquid part, what are, in the part what that's not under that high current? pressure. What do you mean? What do you mean convection currents? What is that? Convection mean? current meaning um, hot liquid being less dense and cold, relatively cold liquid being more dense, and basically cold liquid going down, hot liquid going up. And as the Earth is turning, that creates a spin in that. So you have a convection current which is going up and down, and as the Earth is spinning, it gets twisted around. Now, since okay. most, well, since most of that is pressure. iron, since most of that is iron, you basically get a, a dynamo, a, a, a reverse of the electromotor, right? You have a spinning, um, sp spinning um, iron An core. Electric motor, electric motor has uh, usually copper windings, you know, magnets. Yes, and, and those and those. So copper copper windings around a central core, but copper windings are there just to induce a magnetic field, right? What sure. happens with the Earth is that if there is any dimagnetism present, if there is any magnetism present, the, the core and the currents will act as an amplifier and create a strong, a relatively strong um, electromagnet through the process of... So, so the Earth is a relatively strong electromagnet? Well, yeah, relatively op being operative were there. It is huge, but it is actually weak in, 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 if you measure it as like compared to the magnets that we use. Okay. Uh, back to the convection current. So the, the core is not spinning with the earth. It's spinning the other way to, to create No, it's that. not spinning the other way. Uh, I'm, I, again, this is something that I'm not sure about. I think it's spinning slightly faster than the surface of the Earth, mm. it being closer to the center of gravity and literally most of it having, the most mass in it having um, kind of a small orbit around the gravitational field, right? As you get closer to, to, to the strong well, gravitational it, field, things, things speed up. It is because of the gravitational field, right? That's what we're getting down what? to the, the center. So you, you well you kind of mentioned like it's it, it might be spinning faster and I'm not clear on it you're not clear on it we don't need to you know uh, poke bones at each other. Yeah, I, I'm perfectly willing to be wrong and be corrected later by somebody who knows more about it than, than I do. That's why I'm just pointing out this is something that I'm very unsure of, but I'm willing to to uh, present Give my understanding such as it is, such a, as it is, even if it's wrong. Sure, exactly. Um, so what is the cause of the Earth's electromagnetic field if, because um, you mentioned that if there are magnetic properties of the Earth, then the, um, I can't remember the exact word you used, but the spin of the core, the, which, which could be faster, creates what field? You called it a... a, a Dynamo? No. The yeah, dynamo. Yeah, the dynamo effect. If yeah. there are, yeah, if the Earth's core has magnetic, or sorry, if the Earth itself, let's say the crust or the outer reaches of it, has mag magnets, <laughs> um, then it could amplify the effect, right? Yes. So if, if, if there is any magnetic field present, no matter how, how um, small or how, um, how it's oriented, which like, doesn't matter how, how dispersed it is, those currents which are aligned with the axis of rotation will always pick it up, make it stronger and direction it through the dynamo effect. So that it's I always approximately in the direction of, of the Earth's rotation. So you can, you can swap north for south, but it will always be aligned with, with the rotation ultimately. Okay. <clears throat> and 
what if what if the Earth's crust didn't have uh, magnetic properties, uh, whatever uh, uh, natural magnets? I guess right. We have we have um, what do you call them? Rare earth magnets, right? Rare earth elements, um, ferromagnetic substances, but yeah, you, you, you literally can't get away from those. Ultimately, even, even the atoms themselves are tiny magnets based on the spin. What are those super strong magnets? Like if you put two little dice size cubes, like a, a pair of dice, and you neodymium? put them in your finger, what are, neodymium, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Where do those come from? Uh, it's just a rare earth. Um, metal that, if you put in the correct lettuce, can be magnetized. That, oh, that's so they're, all. They're stated. actually formed, or uh, they're 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 compressed together, maybe, or am I speaking wrong? Like, uh, we, I don't. I, I really out. don't know. Yeah, I we really don't, don't take them out like little for. dice size cubes. You know what I mean? No, 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 no. Uh, no uh, the 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 material itself is not pure neodymium, right? Pure neodymium is not ferromagnetic. It's the other kind of magnetic. So if you get a chunk of neodymium out of Earth and, or smelt it into, into pure, it will not be magnetic, right? Okay. You, you won't get anything stuck to it. Uh, there is a special process by which those magnets are made, which is putting them into some kind of a crystal lattice. I, I, I don't know the details. I think you have to pass it through a strong uh, magnetic field to align the uh, electrons. Yes, you do. Yeah. So, uh, Barney, um, that that molten core that's uh, not molten, but it's under such high pressure that now it's solid. Um, how how does the moltenness end up in Hawaii? Right when when you have a volcano, what 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 is uh, especially with the attraction, the gravi gravitational force, the vector of down, what is what is allowing Kilauea to to be the most active volcano on Earth? Or okay, so it's a pressure it's a pressure release point. That's that has nothing to do with the core itself. Um, all right, so I had. Right. So there's there's molten um, between so um, you can you, earth earth is mostly a droplet of molten iron or molten what is it nickel I think nickel yeah, it's big, uh, big one, big one. Uh, with with just a with, with just a very thin crust of solid cooled surface. But it's it's literally a droplet. It's liquid inside until you get to the core, the inner core, which is under such high pressure to be to be solid. So the crust is solid, and the core is solid, and everything in between, the mantle is <coughs> is liquid. And when you have volcanoes and stuff like that, even tectonic movements, fault lines, all of that is just that thin crust. Of of um, cooled down rock on the surface, getting moved against each other or splitting apart, so that that molten uh, molten um, rock beneath can can pour out. How about how far down is that molten stuff? Just off the cuff, you don't have to. Uh, it, it depends where you are on Earth, but it's. I don't think that mm -hmm. anywhere it's more than what is it, twenty kilometers or something like that. Twenty thirty. So from. From that molten layer, all the way to the core, it, it, is it still molten, or is there layers in between there? Or uh, there, there are layers which are called the mantle, and I think it's the outer core, which is also liquid, but is somehow uh, it, it, it is a transition phase between the molten stuff and the solid core at the center. And let's also not forget that technically the majority of the mantle is not even uh, necessarily a liquid. It's just a superheated solid, so it, so it has the viscosity of a liquid. Rock is a superheated solid. Okay, uh, Barney, 
So how was the moon created? Uh, I, I would like to break in and ask at this point, uh, what, what, what are you getting at? Uh, you're just asking questions, asking questions, asking questions. I think Barney would be the judge of whether or not my questions are relevant or irrelevant or whether he likes talking to me or not, not you. Okay. I, 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 I will cede to uh, Barney's judgment then. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually quite enjoying this. I, I don't see that he's getting to anywhere. He's just asking questions about things he doesn't understand, and I'm perfectly fine uh, with that. Exactly. And I, and I know Barney's far more intelligent than uh, a lot of other people I've heard, including... This is not intelligence. So this I like talking just... to Barney because he's very <laughs> calm, collected, patient... And, uh, and he explains it very well, okay? So uh, if, if the panel thinks I'm asking dumb questions, then go away. I'll accept it's not a matter of asking questions. dumb questions, Aaron. We're just trying to figure out if there's a point to the, to the, rand uh, to the random sp scattering of questions. So and Barney... It's a fair question the, to ask you, Aaron. Is there a point to the what, crust, you're, what you're asking? Barney, the, the crust of the Earth, just below that is uh, molten. Um, that's how... Kilauea is, you know, going up and molten, whatever it is, rock. I don't, I don't know for sure. Lava. Um, how how is the moon created? Um, we don't really know. Um, there were a couple of models which, with more or less success, current. I think the currently, the model that holds up, holds up best is that in the early solar system when the Earth and the other planets were congealing out of the dust and the little rocks in the in the system. Um, one one of the very small planets or planetoids, relatively small in comparing to what the Earth is now, hit the Earth and kind of blew it apart, and it congealed into two separate blobs. One of which is the Earth, and the other is the Moon. Makes sense, I guess, in a in a, uh, you know, in a story, it makes sense. Wouldn't we be able to find some of that molten rock or or any uh, consistent elements uh, on the moon? Like, why would why would we bring back a moon rock and be like, oh my god, it's foreign. We've never seen this before. You know, when it was made <laughs> from. <laughs> The, the exact that thing was, that possibly hit the Earth and then, and then uh, coalesced into a moon. So that, that was one of the findings of the moon missions, that the, the composition of the rocks is um, more or less exactly the same as, as the Earth, or what, what is kind of supported by that model. Um, why they are so valuable is because they have not been exposed to weathering. There was no atmosphere or water or anything um, kind of um, chemically dissolving and, and changing the structures of those rocks. So those rocks are in the pristine condition. They have the same chemical composition as Earth, but they're in a pristine condition that has not been weathered at all. So you can look, what the compos you can look at what the composition of the Earth um, was how it was composed before there was life, before there, or there was water, before there were atmospheric cycles. So you can basically peer back four billion years into the past or a billion, whatever. Yeah. You brought up a good point. You brought up a good point there. So when the moon was created by possibly a collision, uh, there, there was no water on the earth at that point, apparently. What? I mean, it's hypothetical, but you can say yes, no. No, I, 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 di I, didn't, I didn't catch the question. Uh, when the moon was created by this uh, glancing blow of a, you know, another body, let's say. Yeah. Uh, there was no water on the earth. It, it was just solids, rocks, you know. No, the, the, the earth was far too hot to have liquid water on it. Okay. So, it, so it could have had an atmosphere of, of steam or okay. um, of air and steam, right? But th there would be no way for, for water to condense on that surface. My question comes then is where did water come from on the Earth? Um, from 
asteroids from the the same process that that <laughs> controlled the Earth brought right. water onto it, but the surface needed to cool down significantly before that before that water could condense into liquid water. So it would have been atmospheric steam. Have have any asteroids or meteorites hit the moon? Po possibly, probably, yes. Why is there no water on the moon? There is. Oh, okay. I haven't I haven't researched it. There is water on the moon, like lakes. There is water on the moon. Okay. Uh, why is there no life then? If water is the substance of life, why is there no life on the moon? There is no atmosphere and uh, temperature difference. The temperature gradient on the moon is kind of I wild. Didn't say, Barney, I didn't say you what? and me life. You know, we need water. We need air. We need atmosphere. But if yeah. evolution takes effect, if evolution is a real thing. Things adapt to their conditions. Things adapt to their surroundings. There needs to be a condition uh, conducive. What, 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 what makes you and me, excuse me, excuse me, what makes no, you and me no, special, no, Barney, no. Barney? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? What makes you and me special, needing water, atmosphere, air, uh, but yet a, a body that was created from this body, this planet, now we find no life, but yet there's water. Okay, we kind of have a, a very, very close, uh, you know, very uh, the 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 basic um, counterpart of life. But we say, oh, well, there's no atmosphere. Well, that's because you and me need one. Right? So, yeah. what so, makes um, us special? What makes us special, but the moon not special, where it can't evolve? Let's say Darwinism. Why not? Why can't things grow there? So, in principle, there wouldn't be a reason against that, except um, from my understanding, life is very complex com chemistry, which is interacting with other pieces of very complex chemistry in a reproductive cycle. For, yeah. all, of those things, yeah. wait, for all of those things to happen, you need some kind of a solvent, and you need something that you can use as fuel. So if the if all of the liquids on the surface of the moon are either frozen or evaporated and gone, then there is nothing to serve as the solvent. There is no way to get chemicals mixed up with each other and interacting. There is no liquid medium there. So that would be a huge hurdle for, for life as we know it. Okay. Whether yeah. some, some other Barney, kind of would I be wrong to say that there is a very rarefied atmosphere on the moon? There is, uh, it, there is a very rarefied atmosphere of the, on, on the moon, but it still doesn't function as a solvent. Co but, correct. But, I, I just Barney, wanted to, to make that point. Yep. Barney, your, your mention of the solvent is only based upon your and I's perspective of what we need or what we've uh, researched, what you've researched, not me. Uh, on this earth, you know, in yeah. this condition. Yes, now, so I, that, 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 was an, that was the next point that I was going to make. Like, um, if there is some kind of non-organic life that works on, on uh, completely different levels of complexity and completely different levels of, of, of um, chemistry that, that, that we do not know or understand, then I don't know that there is no life on, on the moon because I don't know what kind of a life or how I could look for it or search for it, right? Because without, without a solvent, those chemical reactions would be so slow that if there is an organism there which is working in solid solvents because such things exist, um, their, their metabolism would literally be geological. That it would it would take millions of years. Like if you if you take, for example, I don't know some kind of a metabolic um, function of a cell. For us, it takes it happens multiple times per per second or thousands of times per cell per second in our bodies. For them, it could take millions of years, and I don't know how we could detect that. 
What do you What's think, the, Brian? You're a medical doctor. You know about these things. Why don't you? If you have that? a flu, I'm not yeah, talking about. Well, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. You've, you, you've had the floor long enough, haven't you, Aaron? Right. No, There's several other people. people in this I mean, call. There, there this, are, you know, seven a, other people in this chat. This is a Barney Aaron conversation. I don't know. Barney wants to end it. This has been going. Aaron, Aaron, hang on, hang on, I'm actually going to agree with everyone else. So here's the thing. I don't mind the Aaron, the Aaron and, and Barney thing at all, not at all. But everyone that that's a hundred percent right. This, I mean, seven people aren't going to sit on a panel and not be told and be told, do not talk. So Aaron, you yeah. got to understand that they're going to want to talk. And the more you don't allow them to talk, the more frustrated they're going to get, and the more it, it's going to go away from respectful. So I suggest involve all. They're all we, people on my panel right now. So it, we have been quiet. Go everywhere. Sean, you, you were I, I agree awesome. with you, Sean. Actually, you're right. And and Barney, if if you don't mind, uh, we, I would love some report from the panel, also. Um, but I do have more questions for you, Barney, or discussion. You know, just you can come on my channel. I can come on your channel, or we can agree with Sean that someday he lets just you and me in here yeah. to to sure. answer questions. Sure, sure, sure. So let's let it ride, Sean. I, I'm open for it. You're the host. You're the boss. No problem. I, just, I mean, you guys are you're fine, Aaron. Uh, just you know, just, I could tell what would happen if the if it was no, don't talk. <laughs> it would have been yeah. Good. And, well, and, I know, uh, and the people in the chat still want to have conversations, right? So. Uh, Aaron, you have to recognize that you have um um besides uh, Barney, you have a medical doctor and two engineers in the panel. And one hell of this, and one hell of a mechanic. But but no astronauts. Yeah. I can get an astronaut son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, I really okay, sir. I think I might actually be able to get you an astronaut. How how long do you want this to take? Oh, it's irrelevant. I was just poking fun at you guys. Come on. Right. But you're able to produce. <laughs> Or a joke. Just kidding. Yeah, no, none of you guys have been to the moon to actually test if there has been water there, like Barney was saying, which I don't know either. I'll take his word for it. So I just asked him another follow up question about if there's water, it's the substance of life on this planet. And if that thing was created from this planet, why, you know, and he, great, he gave a great explanation to the best of his knowledge. No big deal. So carry on. Well, Aaron, there's no liquid water on the moon that we're aware of. I don't, I don't know. So there's ice or gas or what? What? What is it? So the moon is made of ice or... It has ice contained within it. In where? Within, is it strewn within the crust? That's Barney, easy how hot is the surface of the moon? Which side? The sun side, sur the, the lit side of the moon. How hot there, is it? There's, they're not, there's, they both get the sunlight. <laughs> right. There, there is no literal dark side of the moon. It's more aptly called the, the far side of the moon from our perspective. <clears throat> now... No, I want the lit side of the moon, the one that faces us. Because if you say there's water on the moon, you, you're saying it's only on the the other side. There's we no be on three or four right now. There's no lit. Count. There's no lit side of the moon. The 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 side that faces us is not the lit side of the moon. There uh, are... From our perspective, gee whiz, gosh, Barney, you're right. You, you, we got to go into the nitty gritty every single time. The side yeah. that I can see from my perspective, okay? Yeah. Well, That's there right. are craters on the moon that do not get sunlight in all parts of the bottom of the craters. You got that? Okay, so those and in those, are in those more... areas, there have, there has been uh, uh, ice detected. And I think the the majority Detected of it occurred. Or, or found, sampled, and and researched. De oh, I, I, they brought me some back, and I licked it. How's that? All right. Look, of course. Well, okay, good. See, there's popsicles on the dark yeah, side. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's what we have. <laughs> we have popsicles on the dark side. 
You can at least do it in favor of actually getting your terminology correct. There is no dark side. There is a far side and a near side. That's right. Okay, let's just call it the moon as a whole. There are mm -hmm. craters near the South Pole and the North Pole where the sun sunlight never gets to gets in portions of those craters ever. Mm -hmm. Just because of geometry. Yep. Did uh, Apollo eight through fifteen ever go there? No, of course nope. not. You know that. Oh, just... Why not? Oh my God! I, I would have loved to found water. Maybe well, of organisms. Course you, I sure you would. Oh, it would have given you a better oh, reason to waste more time oh, here, right? Aaron, I love how as soon as um, other people are allowed to speak on the panel, the first thing you do is turn into a, a whiny baby. I get, yeah. Can you I get snarky. <laughs> yeah, I get snarky. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. Because I, you know, I give back what I'm fed. You know, Barney's very <laughs> calm, collective, smooth. I let him speak forever because I learned from him. You guys have, are just like, have oh, we yeah, not been popsicles on the other side of the moon? You know? Nobody's oh. on the other hey. side. Correction, correction. We have we have found water physically on on the moon. Oh yeah, that's awesome. during the Apollo program. Physically, what do you mean physically? Uh, trace amounts of water were found in lunar rock samples collected by Apollo astronauts. Okay, now Barney, that's my question though, is if water is the sustenance of life on this planet and, and, and the moon was created from this planet, wouldn't, and, and it, it took billions of years to, to coalesce the moon into this spinning ball that, 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 that only rotates once around, it, like why wouldn't evolution of that life sustaining substance not what you and me need, we need air, atmosphere, hydrogen, carbon. We need all these things to live, plants. But why wouldn't the moon uh, evolve at the same rate as the Earth with, from which it was created? That's my question to you. Yeah, I believe that I've answered that question. Right. You, you, it, it's not no, water no, no, equals no. Ar life. Arnie, you said it would, it would take like millions of years. But how no, long no, the no, Earth? No, no. Well, it, without, it, it, it's without not a solvent, water, therefore life. That, that's not how that works. Right. Okay, so a a planet came and or a body came and hit the Earth as it was uh, forming, and it was still, as Barney said, uh, super high temperature rock, and it it sent out some uh, you know rocks into an orbit due to the gravity of this earth that's now missing one side and created the um, elliptical orbit that's how that was created i, I guess um, so at these these bodies are created at, at in billions of years like at the same time yeah yeah okay so one body called earth uh fixed itself you know, fix that huge, massive uh, void that was uh, knocked out by one of these planets and also created uh, water by being hit by meteorites, comets, uh, ice balls, all this stuff, created water. And the other one was still forming and not getting hit by these things. It, it wasn't getting hit by no, these things. It was. Okay. So what are all those holes in the side of it, or those craters? What, he what just said it was being bombarded. I just said it was. By what? Yeah. No, it, if the Earth is being bombarded to create water, so is that moon, right? Yes. Whether it's even finished forming or not, it's, it's part of the process of formation, yes. right? Yes. So how come there's no water on the moon? There is water on the moon. There is water on the moon. Why is there no life on the moon then? Because, because there's the water is not liquid. Missing. Because water does not equal life in and of itself. Otherwise, oh Saturn my God, would be here. Here we go. Fish. No, I mean, Aaron, that, if it were that way, then, then the rings of Saturn would be teeming with fish. Absolutely. I don't know what the rings of Saturn are. Ice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Jupiter's uh, moons have water. Oh, why don't they have life? Uh, 
You tell me. We did. So There's evolution no, doesn't greater, exist. Greater yeah, number evolution of is that, not a real thing. It is my point. Wait, wait, to Aaron, you're also not talking about evolution. You're talking about yeah. abiogenesis. Yeah. What evolution called, doesn't say, say that water you equals get. life. You correct me. Yeah. I, I've been correcting you. You don't seem to want to listen to it. <laughs> so water, water does not equal life. On its own, no. Okay. Uh, you're that's right. right. It's, it, it's a, just a gas. A, a actually, yeah. life, life as we understand it requires more factors than just sphere plus water. A tire doesn't so, equal a car. So what created life on this planet then? A number of factors, some of which we do not yet know. It's the current thought process is that a is that RNA was formed, it's self replicated, and DNA is, and DNA managed to coalesce. Where did it come from? A comet? Right? No, not necessarily. And I'm not terribly sure where. where it well, I thought amoebas. It I thought amoebas. Amoebas are relatively yeah, single cell organisms formed in water, right? Amoebas would not be the first simple cell organism ever. Amoebas Did are relatively comfortable. The first single celled organisms on this planet were they created in water? Very likely. And I probably said. And it was probably it was probably a way okay. to it so was probably they didn't, they didn't need an atmosphere then if they're you know in water they're you know they're not on yes, the shore you, you need you need an atmosphere you need a substantial atmosphere to to have liquid water yes right which produced prokaryotes and then uh, became eukaryotes which produced life as we know it. That's a, that, that created you, obviously. Correct. <laughs> You're treating this panel, this panel like it's a bunch of godless atheists. At least one person on this panel I know has some belief in a deity. Who's that? Oh, that'd be me. What deity do you subscribe to? That's not important. Yeah, it actually, it, it's not... So, but what uh, premise or process or procedure does that deity <coughs> uh, offer you that you subscribe it makes, no, it, it makes no difference, and I'm not here to share my story. I'm here, I said, I'm here to say that there's no reason to treat us like godless atheists who don't care about anything other than rep math. <laughs> we're, carrying beans and we, and we're carrying beans, and a lot of us, and a lot of us care about evolution, and we care about facts. I'm, I'm not treating you, know, you me. like anything. <laughs> I, I, and I, I don't deny a uh, creator. He just doesn't believe one. That's very. That's a very different thing. I'm a pilot. Every time I take off, I believe in all those religions strongly. <laughs> Why would you do that if you're so? Um, I'm you not know, that good a pilot. How's that? <laughs> that's just, that's well, just good common sense. You better believe in them. <laughs> they hit you. It's not going to hurt anything. Yeah, but if you're competent and you've done your checks on the on the aircraft and. You're a mechanic, and you know you. I didn't done say your... I was a mechanic. Well, then why would you fly? You think, well, you, think you think pilots have to be mechanics, Aaron? They have. Are you a commercial pilot? Actually, I do have a commercial rating. Yes. How many well, passengers uh, can you? Uh, Aaron, how many uh, air? How many passengers have you piloted? can you fly? We're letting him rabbit hole, guys. Let's get back on to the evolution of the moon. Yeah. All right, we get back. More for... Yeah, Lou just started some bullshit. No, he didn't. He said some smart shit. Oh. That's actually interesting. The moon may be as much as 0.1% water by mass. I hadn't seen that before. Yeah, there's a good bit of it. Yep. Concentrated mostly at the, the poles, but... That's a lot of fucking water. I wonder <laughs> yeah. what... Shit... Is the Earth even one percent water? I know the surface is, but what about the rest of it? I mean, it's a fraction of the total mass of Earth. Oh, I don't know. Hey, Barney, you're Barney Tearspell, yeah? Yep. Okay, okay. I'm gonna subscribe. Hey, Barney, it was a good conversation. 
there. Um, we'll let the panel now rumpus it. No problem. Yeah. I've enjoyed it very much, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to do it again. Yes, sir. We'll do. I like how the panel's rumpusing, but he wanted to prevent other people from talking. <laughs> that's that's precious. Is, we were uh, we were totally well, except for I uh, cut in a couple times, but we were pretty fucking quiet. Yeah, yeah, you you, you did <clears throat> great during the interrogation. Yeah, because you had, to be, because you had no answers for those questions. That's why I asked Bonnie, who Aaron. might actually give. I call Aaron, Aaron. Aaron, everybody on the that. panel had answers for those questions. Come on, you can't now. do it. All right. Let's everybody go back on the again. panel had. There were no, zero go. hard questions. Aaron, we know what you're doing, buddy. Next time, come with a, di a different routine. This routine is getting a little old. Try try using another topic next time. Okay? None of those questions were hard. <laughs> bring a bring another bunch of softballs. Find another bag full someplace. What do, you, what do you mean, Bruce? What, what, I mean, what do you mean? You can, you can do the same thing. I, I, I suggested this to Brian in the chat. You can do the same thing with pimples. Start talking so about blue. pimples. Ask so Brian's, a, Brian's a doctor, okay? That's the reason blue. I brought that up. You could bring it to Brian and start talking about pimples. You can ask okay. him where they come from, what causes them, what do you sure. do about them, what's inside them, what, who pops them, what do I do after I pop you? You could go on for two hours with that bullshit, just like you do with this. Why don't you try that next time? I get it. Yeah, I get it. So what the, the earth has a magnetic field. What causes that? <laughs> what causes it's been answered. It's already been answered, buddy. Hello. Well, you know what? Your answer. Of course, I got an answer from the guy that I was addressing, which yeah, do, do you for, know what happens reason, when you, because he could give an answer. I can you give can. one, too. Yes, you want to no, know what happens can. when you spin a mass of molten metal? You get eddy currents, and when you get eddy currents, you're going to get a magnetic field as a result. Magnet <laughs> Magnetism is not created from eddy currents. Bullshit, it isn't. Ask maybe God, through okay. a copper winding, maybe with an iron core through a copper winding. Uh, when, where, what are eddy currents, idiot? Tell me. Can you define what eddy currents are? Yeah, when I, when, you stick your, when I stick my oar in the water paddling to your house. Just a few days ago, I took a nail and two paper clips and a length of wire and a magnet and a 9-volt battery, and I made a motor and showed it to my son. My God, you're a fucking genius. And Aaron, do you realize that you... You are, you just are, on, the, you are on the Faraday. You are on the Faraday fucking train. Man, Aaron, you're fucking genius. Aaron, do you realize that you didn't describe an eddy current? You described an eddy? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> has nothing to do with it. You didn't answer my question. I did, you did. Answer your question. Sorry. The earth has the your, your inability the earth to understand has it, a magnetic field. What your, is the your inability to understand what eddy the answer. currents. Eddy it, currents of what? Of water? Of air? See, that's exactly why I don't yeah. didn't understand what he what, said. What is it? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I'm not going to teach magnetism 101 to a nitwit like you. Yeah, that, it, it is because a lost cause. No yeah. Thank you, Barney, oh, no, for being one hundred percent. Not that he doesn't have an answer. Clear and you concise. Don't understand the answer. answer. These guys on the panel, Barney, not even on your level. Oh That's my not God. Not even close. Kind of nope. Most of these people know more than me about at least something. That's. Uh, I got a call. This was really not required uh, to be done in this way. Oh, I'd power. love to believe that, Barney, but if, it's not if you. No, like if you ask any of the people in the panel in the same um, respectful tone and patient uh, phrasing of the question, you will get awesome answers. I I've learned from these from these very same people a lot of things. Well, these I, people. I don't know. I, I don't know everything. I just love to talk. But that doesn't mean that. Well, I know me too. I'm any any smarter or, or better informed than others. I'm just patient. I, I, I love to listen, Bonnie. So That's why you I, when you're on Jose's channel, all the other channels, so I, I really do respect <clears throat> your presentation versus Big yeah, Blue, who says, You never heard of Eddie Currents? Would you like to read what's on the screen Very right now, dipshit? Question. Or do you want me to read it to you? Can you read that, or would you like for me to read it to you? I'll be glad to. Blue, 
Earth's magnetic field, also known as the geomagnetic field, is the magnetic field that extends from the Earth's interior out into space, where it interacts with the solar wind. Just shut up for a second. Hey, straight, just shut up. I'm telling you what I just told you. I'm reading to you what I explained to you earlier, dipshit. The magnetic field is generated by electric currents. Currents due to the motion of the convection currents of the molten iron in the Earth's outer core. Those currents are called eddy currents, dumbass. Now, shut the fuck up. The outer core or the inner core? Motion of convection currents in the molten iron in the Earth's outer core. That's what I said. Okay. How, how does molten iron go back iron, and play it back? How does molten iron said, create a magnetic field just by spinning said, molten iron, iron which, that, which we know we just told you it's, it's right there you. in black and white. Read it. Okay. Yeah. All right, Blue. Go Look to the it Curie up. temperature. So yeah, go to the Curie works. temperature. Let's it, go to the yeah, Curie. Yeah. No, he, he's he's talk, trying to go to the Curie point of yeah. uh, iron. How does every bar magnet start its life out? Molten. You tell me. You're, molten, you're molten steel, right? Yeah, How does that fucking ball. work? No. Genius. Well, there, are natural, there are natural earth magnets. No, there are man-made. You can magnetize any piece of steel. Any piece by of steel. By doing what? <laughs> run by wrapping, by wrapping a wire around it and running current through it, dummy. Oh, by wrapping a wire. What kind of wire? And it will stay. Yeah, it um, will stay magnetized. And any any kind, kind of, of any kind of conductor. It can be aluminum. It Didn't can be I copper. It could be steel. It could be magnesium. Wait, it could be no, anything no, you no, want no. to make it out of. Okay, Didn't so I just tell you that I made a, an electric they, motor this past accessed, weekend? Hey, you're uh, fucking with a pair of electrical engineers here, Scott. You're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble of, if you of, keep it up. Uh, yeah, aluminum wire wrapped, wrapped around it? Is yeah, you can do it with aluminum wire wrapped around it. You bet your ass. You can use copper. You can use silver. You can use, silver, you can use gold. Any kind of conductor. Anything. Okay. That will so, okay, it. I get you. Yeah, I get you. On the surface of the Earth, that's how we create magnetism. Now, at the center of the Earth, how do you do it? We just told you. The same fucking so way. So there's aluminum wire wrapped around the, the no, inner core. Not, and no, outer there's core. eddy currents. It's eddy there, currents there's... In, in the spinning. Eddy oh. currents is not in your description of wrapping wire around an iron rod. Oh, my God. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, really. You do realize the eddy currents are stimulating. and Well, the wire simulates the eddy currents is really what that comes down to. Simulate. Yeah, on the I, surface, we get, and the, I said the engineers can definitely explain this better than I can. I just told you that I created an electric motor with a mm -hmm. nail, a piece of wire, and two paper clips and a magnet this past weekend with my son to show him how a motor works. And you said, "Oh, Where? that's great," and then you just moved on as if nothing happened. Okay, no, I'll, I'll address that. Did you melt the nail? Why would I melt the nail? Well, because I'm, my my question is related to the Earth itself. Because you, you don't, don't understand the Curie point. Large scale. So, but it also, let's go back to your um, nail, um, wire, and what else? And a battery. Jesus fucking something. Christ. Yes, I, I used a 9 volt battery, a piece of wire, a nail, two paper clips. Okay. Now, how far away would that little magnet be able to attract the paper clips? From how far away? Well, it would depend on the strength of the electronic of uh, the electromagnetic field. From and the voltage, yeah, from the battery, yeah. Correct. Same routine. So let's just say nice let's say a half inch. It, it'd go a half inch. How much time you can waste? Yeah. Okay. All right. So it, the Earth's core yeah. is thirty five hundred miles radius. You oh know, down. God. See, uh, the, the, here's the thing: you do not have the educational prerequisites to be talking about these I'm topics. I'm just asking pertinent questions based upon my science book, man. And that's the whole thing that you just wasted Barney's time doing 
It, Hell no. Uh, it, 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 it was entertaining for all of us, it, and, and I don't have an issue with it. Well, then but say that. all you did was ask questions, and as if there was some point to it. I just trying to get a, there was trying a huge there was a huge group. point to it that that Barney, a glober, me, a fencer, he explained it to me very well. Right? I had no rebuttal, no retort. Not, nothing. Not, uh, buddy, until you, until you fags came on. We know better than that. And but how did how does that make You're not you nearly as smart as you think you are. <laughs> How do you know? You're Blue? a bit. You have no idea. Buddy, you're uh, better. You know what? Actually, Blue, you need to. Transparent is the window panes in, my, in the front of my house, my friend. He you is need too to shave, smart by Blue. half. You need to shave, Blue. You're looking a little hairy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Crashes. Check that out. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, I, see, I, I see how it goes. Uh, there's a, there's an ape controlling the monkeys around here, isn't it? No, you assume that the oh. only two electrical engineers are the only ones who play with electric motors when I have an entire secondary business dedicated to them. I'm talking about the Earth. I'm not and talking about your RC motors, your little you know your little fun tracks. The it, it, magnets are not, no idea how they were produced. And I happen to know how they were made, but you don't give a flying fuck about any real information. <laughs> Yeah. You think it's funny I that he said man apes made. controlling monkeys when <laughs> monkeys are apes. I understand man made electromechanic <laughs> mechanicalism. Right? Uh, sorry. Man made electromechanicalism. Uh, Let's just let that well, sink in. Also, I also understand that. Now, I'm talking about the the four forces of the earth strong, the weak, gravity. Uh, he said four and, forces of earth. And the magnetism, <laughs> right? At least he didn't say five elements. <laughs> Water, earth, fire, and wind. <laughs> oh shit! I forgot one. I forgot and that's six. how Barney and I, Barney and I, got on this topic. Was <laughs> because I asked you guys, "Well, you know, what is gravity?" We started with the scale thing. You guys said, "Well, that's the weakest force." So I asked one of you panel members, "What are the other three? You named them, and one of them was the magnetic force. The electric. Yes, it's the magnetic. Not yes. electro, not electro, just the yeah, magnetic no, force. Electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic no. force. No. Yeah. Yes, yes. Electromag oh, the electromagnetic yeah. force. Yes, as, yes, as given to us by Maxwell. Barney? Yes. Can you confirm? Okay. I can confirm. All right, was, I was wrong. All right. I I'm accept not sure your why apology. You think you're panel against each other. That's kind of a weird thing that you're trying, man. So the electromagnetic force, uh, these forces, Barney, or, or the panel, are, are they man-made <laughs> forces? Or how are these Why would they be? ascribed as the four forces? How are they ascribed as that? Yeah, Why would any of them be man-made? Uh, I'm asking you. They're not. Okay. So on the electromagnetic force um, of the four forces, I didn't ask Barney this because I was under the assumption it was just a magnetic force. So I'm sorry, Barney, my line of questioning now has changed because I didn't know it was an electro. Where is the electricity coming from? Electricity is the movement of charge. Every movement of charge will cause an electrical field or a disturbance in the electrical field. Yes, every change in the uh, every change in the electrical field will cause a magnetic field. Right. Have you ever seen a thunderstorm? Yep. Yes. Have you? Yeah. Okay. What causes that? Uh, electron flow. Electronic flow? Electron flow. Negative particles. Doing what? Flowing. <laughs> you know, like a river. Are you sure they're flowing? Yeah. Like a <laughs> yeah. An electrical engineer, for fuck's sake. 
I think Barney would answer this question. I think uh, Barney would answer it in the same in way. A high, in a high voltage wire, electrons do not flow. There, there's actually just a passage of uh, Hold on. power. Uh, uh, what we call power. There's oh no flow. God. It's, so it's you not a water. Difference. It's not like a water hose. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, so voltage is electrical potential, which is pressure. Okay, the, not there pressure. does not have it's to just be potential. It's not oh pressure. My God. It's yes, potential. Po That's it's all it potential, is. Potential, which is pressure, but it does not have to be electron flow. Current is electron flow. So think of a pipe with water in it. There can be a fuckload of pressure. Barney, Barney, you better correct this guy real quick. That's Barney. Not please, I please agree correct with me. me. I agree with you. No, <laughs> Thank no, you, sir. no, 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 no. So, okay, so what is the neutral on a on an AC system? You know, a 120 volt AC system. You have okay. Hot wire, neutral, and ground. What is the neutral? The is sewer. It, so yeah, you have an anode and a cathode, and an an AC system. So you would have an al that's alternating current. So. Oh, uh, current would flow in one direction and in the in the other, and if you're say 110 so where's hertz, flow? where's so, the flow out the end if it's cycling at 60 hertz per second? Where's the it flow would, if it's going this way and that way, this way and that? Way. If right, you would stop talking, I could I could tell you it the current is going to alternate from one direction to the other at 60 times per second. Thus, 60 hertz. Why are you asking me this? I already told you I'm an electrical engineer. He's asking you this because you are an electrical engineer. Yeah. <laughs> well, Schrodinger, if you're not, I am. So, Well, I, I, I'm pretty sure I answered the question correctly. I'm real sure you did. Same way I was taught electronics in college, so... <laughs> Now, this appears to be Aaron's game. Uh, once he gets latched onto somebody, he asks them a bunch of ridiculous questions and just takes them and takes them and takes them and takes them. He doesn't really care what the answer is. No, it doesn't matter. All he's here to do is just waste everybody's time. It's very effective. Yeah, it works. But... That, um, I have to say, though, uh, his interaction with Barney was actually, was actually quite amusing because there were parts to where you could tell it wasn't a matter of he was trying to waste time. He just honestly didn't know what the answer to the question was. Well, uh, Barney did great. Uh, uh, I actually learned shit out of that. So the, the, yeah. it wasn't a lost cause. Thanks, Barney. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So electricity is like water, right? Hashtag it's Barney Rock. similar. You can, you can uh, uh, equivocate uh, or, or you can make an equivalence between water and electricity in a lot of so circumstances. I can, so I can, at one end of the electricity,